I don't have time for these games. And don't come back!
Research station, you speaking. What is your business here? What? We haven't sent a distress signal. Nothing on the comms. No other ships in the system since our last supply drop. Look, what are you trying to pull here? Really? The high energy research lab. All right. I don't know what's going on here, but you should talk with the director. What's inside? Stay with me and don't make sudden moves. I'll get the door. Welcome to Nishina. Step forward. Scan is clear. One moment. Attention all. I am declaring a Okoya. All sections are now on lockdown. Senior staff, protocol Delta. Result. There. Be right with you. Ethan Hughes, Chief of Security. If you'll follow me, I'll show you to the director. We'll take the back way up. Here, you can see our lovely storage area. Don't touch anything. So, uh... Nishina was... What the? Easy! Easy! What the hell was that? One minute, you're following me, and then you're just gone. Minute later, you pop in out of nowhere, looking like you were in the middle of a fight. But there's nothing here. I should have never let you inside. What is this? Some kind of stealth tick? Who are you working for? <sighs> Look. I don't know what's going on. Let's get you to the director. Maybe she can figure this out. Come on, this way. Huh? Who's there? Oh. oh, thank God. Finally, someone came. The distress signal. You picked up the distress signal, right? It's been so long. I'm out of food. Out of water. But I made it. I... Wait. How did you get in here? Hughes? Ethan Hughes? But... He's dead. No. No, no, no. This doesn't make any sense. 
Unless... the accident... maybe... maybe this is a side effect of the accident. If the probe is still feeding power to the distortion, then... Right. We were studying a gravitational distortion. Three months ago, I was calibrating an experiment in our high-energy research lab. There was an accident. An explosion. It caused a gas leak. Sparked a fire. I was trapped in the control room. There was nothing I could do. They're... They're all dead. The lab was built around a xenolith with a dense metallic ob... Yeah, we should. Wait, he's back. All right, we're on our way up. Hughes out. I was just filling in the director. Let's keep moving. If anything happens, the director's office is on the second floor in the Hall. You can't miss it. This way. Come in. Kaya Patel, research director. And this is our chief scientist, Maria Hughes. Ethan said you disappeared right in front of him. Twice now? Three times? Director. You can't be taking this seriously. Look, I don't know who you are or what you're doing here, but there has to be a rational explanation for all of this. Excuse me? That is quite a claim. What makes you think that? Tell us about this other universe. Raphael? Raphael died in the accident. He... Wait. Gas fire. Gas fire. The leak. Director, there was a hydrogen leak right after the accident. It was contained in a minute or two. But if it hadn't been, it could well have caused an explosion. Another universe, though. That's a lot to swallow. An artifact? You mean the source of the distortion? You know something about it? The multiverse? Other universes? At least one other universe, clearly. And you have some connection with them, then. Interesting. I wonder if that's why this is only affecting you. Ah, <sighs> this facility and the research level two kilometers beneath us were built to study a gravitational distortion, this artifact and the field it creates. Three months ago, our chief engineer, Raphael, was calibrating an experimental probe when something went wrong. 
We still don't know what happened. There was a series of explosions, and somehow, it's still running. That would make sense. That's why the field strength keeps increasing. We have a control unit for the probe. After the accident, I tried to use it to shut down the system, but the kill switch isn't responding. We could shut it off manually, but the entire research level is locked down. We can't even get down there. How? I told you the research level's locked down. We can't even use the damn elevator. What? Clever. In this other universe, Raphael survived. He made it back from the lab, so clearly his elevator works. Take it, and you might be able to shut down the experiment. This is crazy. But first, we have to do something about your shifting. We can't shut down the probe, but we might be able to adjust some of the other parameters. It's risky. We don't know what we're dealing with, but... <sighs> All right. It's worth a try. Then it sounds like we have a plan. Come with me. The control unit is in the fabrication lab next door. What have we gotten ourselves into? It's you. What happened? You disappeared, and the ceiling caved in, and... and... I thought I'd finally lost it. What? This place is falling apart. I don't understand any of this. If I hadn't seen you disappear with my own eyes, I wouldn't have believed it. I... Okay, okay. You're my ticket out of here. We'll do this your way. We can get out through the pantry. Here's the key. I'll back you up, I guess.
Look at this. It's going to take hours to clear this out. Assuming the rest of the building doesn't come down on top of us. How should I know? You're the one who keeps winking in and out of existence. I just want to get out of here. Go do whatever you're going to do. I'll see if I can clear a path to the door. What? I... Oh, it's you. You realize you just popped into my locked office. So much for security protocols. Uh, sure. Down the hall. Take the stairs next to the atrium. Yeah. Let me get the doors for you. And done. Is there anything else you need? The Kataxi in the other universe. Aha. Uh -huh. Wow. I've got an experimental thing one of the engineers put together. But... Uh. What did I do to deserve this? Yeah, I hope so. Maybe we can work something out. Maybe so. All right. Yeah, it's never been field tested, but all yours. Did you get lost in the hallway? Ugh. All right. This is the probe control unit. Most of these controls aren't responding. I'm going to very carefully adjust the settings I can. There's no way to tell what's about to happen. Pay attention and be ready for anything. I'll begin by adjusting the energy feed of the electron beam array. We're at 93 terabits. Calibrating to 95. 97, 100. Ugh, nothing. Let's try the other way. 91, 89. Okay, okay. It looks safe to approach. to 
distortion. Lux pattern matches the distortion in the lab. The setting is just exposing it somehow. Hmm. Step into the distortion, please. What happened? Are you all right? So, the lower setting causes the distortions to manifest, and the higher causes you to shift. That seems promising. Keep it on the lower setting until you want to shift, and you should be able to avoid any more accidents. I'd give you my control unit, but it looks like you already have one from the other universe. Love to take a look at that when this is all over. Right. If you can get down to the research level, you need to make your way to the high energy research lab. Disengage the power interlocks, then pull the emergency shutdown to stop the probe. That should finally put an end to all this. Oh, and before you go, the director wanted to speak with you. It really is just down the hall. Well then, all set? If you need supplies, I've asked Dr. Barakova to take care of you. It's the least I can do after everything we've put you through. Before you go, there is one other thing we should discuss. If this experiment is the cause of your shifting, when you shut it down, the shifting will stop. What happens then? To you and to us. There's no way to be certain, but let's theorize. Nishina is a closed system, two potential states held in tension. When you shut down the experiment, that tension will resolve. You are the outside observer in the system. Whichever reality you are in at that moment is what will become real. For you and your universe, at least. The question is, which will you choose? Hmm. If this were a choice between my life and Raphael's, I would ask you to save him. But as the director of the station, I am responsible for the lives of my staff. Thirty people. People with families, careers, futures ahead of them. In this universe, you don't have to decide now. But when the time comes, please, keep them in mind. Now. It's time you are going. With the network offline, we can't shut down the security system on the research level, so you can expect some resistance. Be careful. Ethan, unlock the elevator lobby, please. Ma'am, research level is still locked down. I'm aware of that. I... All right. Done. Good luck, dear. It's been a fascinating day. Hey. Tatiana Barakova, station's doctor. This is not a public medical facility, but the director has ordered me to assist you nonetheless. I can spare a few med packs. Beyond that, I am not your therapist, your psychologist, or your cosmetologist. If there's anything else you need, ask. My journal? Have you been in my quarters? Who do you think you are? The director may have given you run of this station, but I... Wait. Wait. What is this? This entry... 
It's mine, but... I didn't write this. And the scorch marks... God. Yes. Thank you. I can spare a few more supplies. And I'll give you a break on anything else you need. <sighs> Let me see what I can find. Don't touch the equipment. Yes, what?
Security lockdown is active. Emergency override controls are available on designated security terminals.
that, so. Please proceed with caution. There is heavy machinery operating in this area. are available on designated security terminals.
Director, he's coming around. Careful, dear. Slowly. How are you feeling? So you did? When the lockdown ended, we found you both out cold on the floor of the lab. And then we found our Raphael. I still can't believe it. To me, you've all been dead for months. And then, just see this. It's a lot. It's really a lot. In the end, I suppose it did. We're never going to be able to publish this. You're free to go. And to take the artifact. I think it is abundantly clear how little we still understand about it. For saving Raphael and our research facilities, I'd like to offer you compensation to the full extent of my authority. And as for me, I've decided to take a leave of absence. After everything that's happened here, I need some time to think this over. But if you ever need an engineer, just say the word. I owe you everything. Thank you. This has been a truly remarkable experience.
United Colony space. Maintain course and prepare to be scanned. Scan complete. Go ahead and land. Spanners been washing red. Found one. Easy as a needle in this stack. Hope those powers you're getting to overinflate you. Got enough eagles in constellation. Colony space. Maintain current course while we scan for contraband. Scan complete. You are cleared to land at New Atlantis. Never mind. The Spanner's Torque is what the... I Found one. Easy as a needle in this stack. Hope those powers you're getting to overinflate you. Got enough eagles in Constellation.
advised you are entering United Colony space. Please maintain course and prepare to be scanned. All right, we're done. You're cleared to land at New Atlantis. The spanners told been washing red, been poring over the charts, looking for another match. Think this one might just be it. I'm just a courier. I understand that. I'm not late. Really hope someone comes to take a look at me soon. Someone authorized you to be I couldn't here. tell you the last time. Just hey, let's keep our voices down. The clinic doesn't exactly know I'm giving its supplies away. That being said, I've been expecting someone soon. I've heard Bayou really has a vice grip on Neon right now. 
I have some supplies I can give you. Should be more than enough for now, and it shouldn't draw any suspicion from the clinic. I'll have them loaded onto your ship. Sorry. I can't do that. This is the most I can give you without drawing suspicion. You really don't have anything better to do? That's what I'm hoping. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, I really shouldn't do this. If the clinic finds out... <sighs> All right, you win. You're very persuasive. I can throw in a few extra supplies, but I'm not going to make this a regular thing, okay? They'll be loaded onto your ship. Fantastic. That'll really help out around here. Thanks for everything. These supplies will be put to good use. Here, take this. I threw in a bit extra for you, since you really came through for me. Lost, kiddo. Yeah, well, make it quick. I ain't a fan of loitering. I had some high hopes for this shop back when my husband and I opened it a while back. These days, if you ain't a regular, you're usually trouble. Mm-hmm. Sounds like we understand each other then. Never heard of them. Now, are you gonna buy something or just annoy me all day? How am I supposed to know where he is? I like to think so. <laughs> okay, that's pretty good. This isn't getting us anywhere. I told you, I don't know who Headlock is. Now either quit loitering, or make yourself useful and buy something. Well, now that I know you're serious, we can talk business. Yeah, I know Headlock can't stand them. And I heard some of the other Sioka can't either. That boy doesn't know how to keep himself out of trouble. What'd he do this time? Hmm. Well... If any place should be terrorized, it may as well be the Emporium. In any case, if you're so desperate to find him, he and his friends are probably hanging out in Warehouse 4 or somewhere near there. I gotta ask, what are you gonna do with him? <laughs> That's one way to punish him. <laughs> you'll just bore him to death. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a business to get back to. If you aren't gonna buy anything, you better run along. Come again. Not interested. Do 
I have business with you or something? And who do we have here? You here for business, or to get your head caved in? Is that so? I'm not just some low-life thug anymore. I'm with the Sioka now. You mess with me, you'll mess with the whole Syndicate, and that won't end well for you. Oh yeah? Those are big words coming from a nobody. So go on, Hotshot. Give me a reason why I should leave Tevin and his shitty little store alone. Go on, enlighten me. But don't waste my time. I don't think things would be that extreme, but I guess I get your point. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that. Sure. There may be some better uses of my time. It kills me to say this, but I see your point. Fine. We won't go around to the Emporium any longer. Whatever. Next time, I might not be so nice. are guaranteed to be of the highest quality. Oh my. Now that is a true relief. I thought I would never be rid of him. I'm not one to get involved with the rabble, so I'm glad you came along when you did. Thank you for your help. Come back soon. You never know what we'll have for sale. for supplies this is the place well I'll be and all you had to do was talk to him meanwhile I was so damn stubborn I made this whole thing harder than it had to be given you almost went blind working with half a kilo of fish cuts in your eye yeah I'd agree and I'd still be wandering around that storage vat helpless if not for you thanks for your help on this the Merchants' Alliance is finally united. I don't know if we'll ever get a fair shake in the city, but it's a start.
Hello. I'm sorry if I sound rude, but would you mind coming back later? We're actually closed right now. I just forget to pull down the shutters. I'm afraid so, but I don't really want to talk about it right now. Perhaps another time, when I'm feeling up to it. I'm afraid not, but come back tomorrow and perhaps I'll be strong enough to speak to you. Right now, I just... I can't. Hello there. Oh, are you here about the brownouts? That's usually the only reason people come up here to talk to me, since I'm the power system manager here. Of course you did. That's, that's okay. It's a problem here. Citizens and visitors alike have a right to know what's going on and when to expect a fix. Problem is, I don't know how long we'll have to deal with this, because I'm needed here to oversee the whole system, and we don't currently have anyone available to go out and solve the issue at the moment. Actually, that's not a bad idea. I'm a little new to the job, and I'll admit I'm struggling a little bit. I could use some help. I could use someone who's handy with a laser cutter to break up the ice that's formed on some of the power system machinery out there. That should clear up the shorts we've been experiencing and stop the brownouts. Does that sound like something you can do? Oh, thank you. I, I guess I'm lucky you showed up then. Just be careful not to hurt yourself or the equipment. I'll continue to monitor things from here. one thing to learn about early colonies. Hello there. Welcome to the new Homestead Chunks. We've got all your Chunks favorites. Well, almost all of them. Sadly, we're out of the special sauce. I know, I know. But everything else is still that great Chunks food you know and love. <laughs> so, what can I do for you? If I'm completely honest, it is. And people are always saying how this Chunks can't compare to the real deal. And I just know it's because we never had that mouth-watering sauce. 
I've been in contact with some of the other restaurants out there, and they'll give me some. But they say they can't afford to send it, and I don't have a ship, so what am I to do? Wait, for real? You do that. You're not pulling my leg. Oh, yeah, right. I actually just got a message back from another Chunks before you got here, and they got a case ready to go for me. Just tell them you're there to pick it up for me, and it should be good to go. Thanks. on the earth. It's always so cold here. Great! Another tourist. <sighs> Let me guess. You slipped on the ice and need a doctor to wrap your sprained ankle? I appreciate that you're trying to set me at ease, but that might as well be the same. Sorry for how I responded. It's not you, it's me. I'm just frustrated about all the non-native people I need to treat when our own still need help. Anyway, what can I do for you? I don't. They make a mockery of new homestead culture. And on top of it, they're reckless. It's like I said before, I feel like I'm treating them more often than our own people. Actually, maybe there is. I have an idea that may be best suited for someone relatively unknown, instead of myself. I've got a mountain of work and a reputation to maintain. So I bought a realistic monster costume. The plan was to wear it, scare tourists away, and start a rumor about terrible creatures living on Titan. I figure that once word gets around, tourism will take enough of a dive to give me some relief. That's the spirit. To be honest, I'm not sure it'll work either, but I feel like there's no harm in trying. Here's the costume. I think this will work best on the surface, so just find a group and run up to them, acting like a convincing alien monster. With any luck, they'll run screaming and book the next flight out of here.
emergency channel, but we are in need of assistance concerning the large ship in orbit, and we value discretion in this matter. If you are willing and able, please see me as soon as possible at the main security office in Paradiso. Over now. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200-year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Of course, we know that now. Human or not, we were still unable to communicate our intentions. As soon as we discovered them, we fully expected negotiations would be necessary. Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. For security purposes. I Just do not because believe our we have equipment's need to old, guests, doesn't mean it I'll won't work to take down insist. troublemakers. Welcome to the Earth colony ship Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios. Climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be... I'm glad you're not an alien, but that would have been so cool. So, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We, we were, were told that- Stop what you're doing! You're under arrest! Your money's no good here. You've gotta come with me. Good. We don't need any more trouble today. Now that we know what's out there, things could... We've got strict rules around here. If you They're strict for a high generation. Lived and died. limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Careful waving that fancy gun around. We don't need to see what it can do. Just stay out of trouble. So, here we are. Let's talk. No matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? 
We know there's a settlement on the planet below, meaning people were here before us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Yes, yes, of course. But we need to start from a firm position and state our goal. If need be, we can compromise, work out a mutually beneficial deal or some such, but initially I'd like you to be firm with them and convince them to leave the planet to us. Let me know how they respond, and we'll go from there. Thank you, and Godspeed. The Constant is a peaceful ship. Never seen a ship like yours before. Then again, I haven't seen any like yours. We were never trained to address threats coming from outside our ship. be a prime target for pirates, but they know to stay away for the most part. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sugiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Something I can help you with? Ah, oh, yes. Let's get right to it then. As you can imagine, we've got a predicament on our hands. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. I see. Well, if you're speaking on their behalf, I'll refer you right along to the chairman of the Paradiso Group's board, Oliver Campbell. All formal decisions will go through him, not me. I'll let him know you're on your way. Some of our guests. Great time. If I could just. Stay here. Hey, excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. Paradiso Security is I only just feel that we should You're be focusing on the natural beauty of this planet. About the beach. Not our our I am. And you must be the diplomat Jiro told me about. 
Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given the circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> Hmm. Sarcasm isn't nearly as powerful a tool as some think it is. But you're right. No one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So, tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship? Besides scaring people away. Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not gonna work. Now, tell me. What are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. We own this planet. They don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with. And how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. Well, absurd or not, that's our official stance. I make the decisions that are best for our entire group. You don't. And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso group, we appreciate your help. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. It's lovely here. Hey, sorry. Didn't mean to be rude and ignore you when you came in. I'm just trying to figure out the solution to a problem I'm having. What can I do for you? Matter of fact, I am. We keep losing business to tranquility. It seems like they're always trying new things, new recipes. And well, we just have the same old coffee here. I have an idea, but I don't know if I have the skills to pull it off. A tea sommelier from Tranquility Corporate is on vacation here. I overheard them talking to Polly about some new tea product they're working on. If you could convince them, or otherwise get the recipe, before it goes to market, I'm sure it will help me succeed. Maybe I can even move up the corporate ladder. Ah, oh, I hope so. This could be the big break I'm looking for. I guess I have to admit, this resort isn't that bad. I'd actually rather keep to myself, if you don't mind. Sorry, did you need something? 
I'm trying to enjoy my vacation. This should be interesting. I'm sure you are, but that's no reason to give up coveted corporate secrets to a firm. Sorry, but no. Okay, well, it's not selfish to protect corporate interest, but I see your point. After all, this is just something I've been working on in my free time. Probably not. I'm glad you understand the position I'm in here. <laughs> That's a good one. Very well. I can tell another tea enthusiast like myself when I meet one. What's the harm in sharing what I found to be a particularly delicious brew? Besides, it's not even guaranteed to go to market anytime soon. And even when it does, there are bound to be changes. So here, enjoy. Not to be a downer, but this place is awesome. Enjoy your stay. You're back. Ooh, does that mean you've... Amazing! I can't believe you did it. I hope it wasn't too difficult. Well, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Now, let's take a look. Wait, the secret ingredient is... Coffee? Really? <laughs> well, I guess I'm in luck. Once I brew this tea, it'll be a snap. And... I have higher quality coffee ingredients to boot, so it'll be even better than what they have here. Stop by if you ever want to try some. have all sorts of chunks. Uh, meat chunks, potato chunks, uh, dessert chunks, even beverage chunks. Hello, hello. Welcome to Chunks. If this is your first time dining with us at this location, you'll find our cuisine and service is a step above what you're used to. Please, don't hesitate to ask if there's anything I can do to make your Chunks experience as enjoyable as possible. Huh. I thought it was a joke at first, but yet, here you are. Let me get that for you. I wonder why they keep running out so quickly over there. Anyway, tell Luther I said hi.
Welcome back. Hey, good to see you again. About who and just in time, too. I'm practically salivating just thinking about that sauce. Man, you really saved my butt. Corporate's gonna see just how much this place is gonna turn around. Thanks again. medical assistance oh I'm glad it worked thank you with any luck I'll be able to give more attention to my regular patients now tell you what if you want to come back later and do this for me a couple more times I'll even let you keep the costume Nose clean. Last thing I want is to charge you for a DP, an A and B, B and E, or Nice. You 
have another story for me? I already interviewed an ex-pirate about the robbery. But she was as reliable as good coffee around here. So you were there when it went down? What were you doing there? Oh boy. Anything you tell me as a source, I won't reveal. But there's limits to my journalistic integrity. That said, I've heard maybe the captain had it coming. Tell me about this Captain Petrov. I've heard he's a bit of an eccentric. What was your impression of him? With bonafides like that, he should run for office. No one seems to know exactly what was stolen. But everyone agrees it was valuable. Care to shed some light on it? Sure, right. Try again. What was stolen? I... Huh. I guess it takes all types? Last question. About, and I'm quoting, a zoo gone wild. The other source swore up and down that alien creatures got out of their cages and went on a rampage. Please, please, please tell me she was telling the truth. It's got to be some aurora-induced hallucination. Some days, it is worth it to get out of bed. I love it. This is just a plain old good story. Check the news feed for it later. And here's your payment.
still around, I think. My pops told me the Mantis took out the Beast and Jake Gatto. I mean, seriously scary shit.
I mean, the Mantis is a fairy tale. Someone to keep pirates from going off the deep end. I... I guess it's possible. She never talked about where she got her fortune. And man, she could handle herself anywhere. It's... a, a lot to take in.
I am sorry I could never show this lair to you. The lair is a secret that's been passed down for over a hundred years. And there are rules. You remember when you were a teenager? All the training, the drills, all of it was to prepare you for this. I know you have it in you, Leon.
need some got anything you need to offload If you don't see what you want, feel free to ask.
I don't want to hear any complaints. I can hardly believe it. It's great to see you. How is Ma? Howdy. Excuse me. Excuse me. A little desperate here. Keep an eye on your valuable. Well, we'd be dust, except for the factory. Off-worlders. Nothing good ever comes from them. Oh, hello. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. Oh, you should have just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grab drive that looks like it could be compatible. With some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor, and it's yours. It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grab drives are. Perhaps not, but I don't want to just settle for an offer far below its value. This part is incredibly difficult to come by. In my experience, the right offer is always worth waiting for. As much as I'd love to, I just don't know if I can afford to take a loss on this. Again, I'm sorry. You know, I have to make a living too. And Hope Tech can't just give away parts for free. Sorry, but I've got to charge you the same price as everyone else. You're done right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. We know what's out there. Sure is nice to know there are other people. <laughs> I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are. Welcome, welcome. I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Ah, I knew it. It's, it's incredible. I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course. Anything for my new friend. 
What grab drive? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right. This will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? You do? Well, this should be a bit easier. Though I must remind you, the ship is much older than the ones you're likely used to working on. So, listen to me first. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! All this time, we thought we were alone. Looks like everything is good to go. Both your end and mine. Can inform the captain while they're finishing the installation? Thanks. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work. Careful waving that fancy gun around. The constant is a peaceful ship. Don't change it. Now that you're here, I can finally give... Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck. But you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. We were so close to finding our new home. Working toward that next technological leap. Then life for you to need a space on you. You're lost. That's just good as a Welcome to the Ryujin. Plenty of good stuff. Here, take a look.
See ya. Welcome to Ryujin Industries. Can I help you? Imogene and Yuko run a tight ship around here. I hope you're more prepared than the last one. Have a seat. All right, just to get a few things straight here, I'm Imogen Salzo, Senior Operations Specialist here at Ryujin Industries. I don't normally do this, but my counterpart Yuko is indisposed at the moment, so here I am. We're looking for someone to fill an entry-level administrative position. Apparently, our algorithm has failed us and believes you to be a decent match, which I'll take up with our technicians later. So... Let's get this over with. Why do you want to work for Ryujin Industries? I'll be sure to let our marketing team know their phrases are catching on. But I hope that's your sense of humor showing. Not to say we don't have our share of self-important attitudes here. In fact, you'd fit right in where some are concerned. But, moving on. This next one should be interesting, considering you marked having zero experience. Why do you consider yourself qualified for a job like this? Including this job? The art of the deal can go a long way here. If what you say is true, you'll have department heads fighting over you in no time. How motivated are you to succeed? All in, huh? At least that's an attitude we can work with here. And finally, my last question. If you worked here for five years, what role would you see yourself in? If you can make any deal happen, management is just the tip of the iceberg. So look, since there's a million other things I'd rather be doing than this, not to mention that this isn't even my job, you're hired. On a probationary period? Of course. First order. There's a meeting starting soon, and I need you to pick up the coffee order at Terra Brew. Fairly easy, so you shouldn't be able to screw it up. If there's a line, skip it. Tell them you're here for Imogene Salzo, and you should get served right away. Using Terra Oh, the Ryujin order. You must be new. What happened to Tomo? Did he finally get that promotion? I got fired, is what happened. And this is the soulless suit they got to replace me. Tomo, I'm sorry. I know how hard you were working for that promotion. Four years behind a desk, getting coffee, kissing up to that high and mighty Ularu Chen. Just to get replaced by this nobody? <sighs> Hearing that ad should have been the first sign they were going to get rid of me. I bet Ularu was just waiting for the moment to hire you. And now that I've been terminated, it's only a matter of time before they send you after me. So I'm taking matters into my own hands. And believe me, it's either you or me. You want to talk? <laughs> I'll tell you what. You get one chance to prove you deserve this job. Change my mind, and I'll walk away. Fail? <laughs> and I think you know where this is headed. You, you can't be that good. Not yet. No, no, I, I have to do this. You don't understand. Look, at some point, Ularu really will send you after me. 
Just, just promise me you'll remember this. That, that uh, when I came after you, I gave you the chance to talk me down. You're either one of the few good people in Neon, or you already know a thing or two about leverage. Just don't make me regret this. Hey, no worries on anyone calling security here. Take it from me, Ryujin will handle any drama that may come from this. You'll want to be sure to report it to them. Yes, of course. Here it is. Oh, and please let Mr. Cho know that we did have the recommended maintenance done. I triple-checked the grind myself, and a mistake like that will never happen again. I hope that coffee is still hot considering the time it took you to get it. You either need to learn this city or how to deal with distractions. So, what was the holdup? Good answer. And the one I was hoping for since we learned of the incident before your return. Your handling of the Tomo situation has caught some attention. And we'd like to try you out in a different role at the company. And since Yuko isn't here to object, your new position starts right now. So, congratulations. You've been promoted. Not bad for your first day, right? You say that now, but let's move on to the details. I'm promoting you to junior operative. The position is a bit more complicated and completely confidential. Your main duty is to add influence when necessary to ensure success of the business. Any questions so far? Really? Well, this transition may be easier than I thought. Now, let's get that coffee delivered. I'll gladly take mine. And since Yuko's still a no-show, feel free to keep hers. The other recipients are eagerly waiting for you in the conference room. Ah, coffee. You'd think we'd want to support our own subsidiary and get tranquility more often, but Terra Brew it is. Terra Brew would be a substantial purchase, but we fully intend to develop the tranquility brand. Current projections are set to surpass Terra Brew within the next five years. Tea talk aside, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Lyndon Calderi, Chief Financial Officer. I'll be the one deducting expenses from your pay every time you manage to screw up, which hopefully won't be often. Good. Then it appears we have nothing left to discuss. This introduction was... not annoying. I hope our future encounters are as productive. Just what I needed. Imogene said she hired someone new. I'm Genevieve, head of marketing and public relations. Likewise. Anyway, it's good to put a face to the new operative. The only question now is how much work are you going to be? A few slip-ups are to be expected. Just know that one screw-up for you means a lot of overtime and sleepless nights for me and my team. So any precautions you can take will be greatly appreciated. Coffee, finally. Well, let's have a look at you. If only pleasure was the word for it. I'm Alexis Price, head of the legal department here, and I'll be direct. Any legal troubles you cause as an operative, witnesses getting arrested, are my troubles. So steer clear of law enforcement. We may have connections with Administrator Bayou and the Free Star Rangers, but they aren't the ones I prefer to abuse. 
Let's hope your best is good enough. So, fetching coffee one minute, and junior operative the next. Camden Cho, supply chain manager for Ryujin. We won't work together much, but as part of the same department, hopefully I'll be seeing you around. Ah, oh, so she remembered. Not that I expect much out of Terra Brew Coffee, but hey, I suspected their grinder was on its last leg. Anyway, welcome to the team. Oh, and just a heads up, people in your position don't typically see the brighter side of Ryujin Industries. But rest assured, this is a great company, and the work we do goes toward benefiting millions. Please do. It's easy to get wrapped up in the bad if that's all you see. Of course, you'll be forming your own opinions as you go. Just keep an open mind. Oh, and thanks for the coffee. I'd hate to be on Miss Salso's bad side. I hope you enjoyed your little meet and greet. I thought you'd like to know the execs who you'll be impacting while on the job. I can only imagine. Now that you've met a few of the execs, let's get you started. We have reason to believe that our friends at Kelt Corp are trying to hack into our R&D server, since we're both competing for a contract right now. My words exactly. We can't allow them to win the contract, nor can we allow the action to go unpunished. I'll be giving you a data slate with a file that you'll need to upload through one of their computers. Remember, this is confidential. We can't have anyone at Keltcorp getting suspicious. When all is said and done, it should be as if you were never there. Here's the data slate. Good luck. If you happen to see Lyndon on this floor, give a girl a heads up. Sorry, I'm busy at the moment. What do you want to do for the break later? I don't know, but I gotta get out of here. It's been non-stop interruptions since this morning, and I'm not... Bad, but you're going to need more supporting evidence. Imogen's a stickler for details. And that's what I was afraid of. Well, look who survived their first assignment. How'd it go? Anything to report? I know what you mean, but that's your Not a single setback. <laughs> I knew you were going to be perfect for this job. If you recall, setbacks mean a lot of things for a lot of people. Payoffs, cover stories, cleanup crews. You get my drift. The cleaner your work, the more intact your payments stay. I'm sure you understand. Exactly. In the meantime, I'll make sure that slate is properly disposed of. 
So, now that we know you're capable of handling some light cyber mischief, let's try your hand at a little uh, framing. One of our subsidiaries, Arboron, is currently competing for a contract against Laredo. Now, the buyer likes to keep their associations clean, and will be sending a representative to Laredo in Aquila City for an evaluation. We just need you to visit their office first, and accidentally leave behind some incriminating evidence against their company. Good. This one should be easy to pull off. Laredo has their own building, unlike Keltcorp, so at least there's only a single layer of security to deal with. Here's the slate we need you to plant. It holds confidential files that'll cast the perfect negative light on our friends at Laredo. Now, get going. Steer clear of the stretch. So, so we had to clean up there. the video of the range again. Why don't we just close it down? It's not the cops. It stinks. But your nose. Let them. A few beer bottles and graf- It is the least. I was hoping you'd show up soon. Is it done? Excellent. I'll let Ularo know that we can start moving forward with our negotiations. Now, I think it's time to examine a different set of skills. Nice to see I haven't worn you out yet. Your next assignment is to find a security chief and use some creative thinking to obtain their security keycard. And when I say creative, I don't mean with a weapon. Either look the part and be persuasive, or be quick with your hands. Good luck. I'm sure you'll be able to get that keycard without incident. Just remember, if anything does happen, it's up to you to bail yourself out. I don't want to hear any complaints. Keep an eye on your valuables. Don't even think about trying anything. Can I help you? Sure, sure. Let me just get right on that. 
If it's an emergency, it sounds like you need to make time for those details. I thought I made myself clear. I'm not giving you my card. Oh my god. You're serious, aren't you? Maybe I can make an exception. All right, take it. But you better be quick. There. Got that key card for me? Now we're talking. Not bad for a novice. I think you're ready to kick things up a notch, and your timing couldn't be better. Good. It's time for a change of pace. This next assignment requires a bit more discretion for two reasons. First, you'll be dealing with high level executives, and second, you'll be in the Astra Lounge here in Neon. The assignment is pretty easy. Our techs failed to uncover a potential deal between Infinity LTD and Quantum Synergies. Your job is to make sure that deal fails. That's what we're hoping for. You'll be speaking with Quantum Synergies Executive Director Zola Adisa and their financial manager Arthur Cruz. I'll be giving you a dossier on both. I strongly suggest you read them for talking points. Exactly. Those lines are most likely to sway Zola and Arthur away from Infinity, not to mention give them a gentle nudge in our direction. The Infinity LTD rep is Nina Hart. I'll also be giving you an altered version of her presentation to swap out with the original. We've changed several figures, just enough to cause sufficient confusion throughout their meeting. Whenever executives are faced with numbers that don't properly match up, any faith they may have had will falter. Finally, I recommend dressing appropriately, so I've taken the liberty of having a suit made for you. We need absolute discretion on this one. I don't want any SSNN broadcasts about murder in the Astral Lounge. Got it? I bet you are. Just remember to keep a low profile. Don't let the Astral Lounge distract you too much. Someone came dressed to impress. Here on business, or just out to escape? Ah, same here. Nothing like a business trip paid in full. Especially when there's good downtime. Ryujin Industries. A good guess since we are here in Neon, but no. Infinity LTD. Risky, you say. By all means, enlighten me. Cheap is a word quantum synergy should never be associated with. I believed our team had thoroughly researched infinity. But your comment gives me pause. 
Their instability was cited as a pain point, but one we could deal with as long as we maintained control of all joint projects. However, upheaval always comes with its own series of issues, delays, morale, public perception, and Drexler has yet to prove he can provide the consistency that I would prefer. Perhaps it really is more than I'm willing to undertake. A surprising conversation, and one I would never expect from someone such as yourself. I suppose the old saying, never judge a book by its cover, is appropriate here. It seems I have quite a bit to reconsider now, so it looks like the pleasure aspect of my trip needs to be postponed. Thank you for the insight. All these years, and Bayou hasn't let this place slip a single notch. The man knows how to run a business. Well, I take that as a compliment. Coming from someone as well-dressed as yourself, you either got great taste or great connections. Maybe even both. Tell me, you don't happen to work for Infinity LTD, do you? Got something against Infinity, I take it. I'd love to hear your reasons why. That's an awfully big claim to make. You'd have to have some inside details on their operation. However, it does match some of my own research that I've been conducting into their finances. Aren't you the resourceful one? That number tracks with the insider details I've been getting. Hmm, interesting. Look, it was nice meeting you, and I quite enjoyed our little talk. But it sounds like I need to take another look at some data before I head into this presentation of theirs. See you around, and maybe next time I'll be doing business with you. Run to spacers. There a lot, right? I hope you have some good news for me. Well, that wasn't too bad, was it? You're a natural. I'm not just saying that because I hired you. The Astral Lounge can be overwhelming for some, with all its bells and whistles. Tie that in with manipulating people who are the equivalent of their boss's boss, most junior level ops would start to show their cracks. Overall, not bad for your first high profile assignment. You even earned yourself a bonus, which Linden was more than happy to give. It's well deserved. Just keep making me look good and there'll be more where that came from. But no rest for the weary at Ryujin. We've got a decent backlog of assignments and they just keep coming, so I hope you're still good to go. At least this next one will be a break from all the chatter.
Your next assignment is to remind the competitor of their place in the corporate food chain. Some call it retaliation, but we like to think of it as tough love. Most corporations live and die by public perception. Trusted products lead to a good reputation, which leads to profits. And, like it or not, we're all here for the profits. Your assignment is to plant an ARC device. The ARC will allow us to frame our competitor for gross negligence and tank the public's perception. Good. All you need to do is plant the ARC on the service panel of your target. We can handle the rest from here. Do your best to make sure you aren't seen. The key is to make this look like a malfunction. And good luck. Keep it up, and you'll probably have my job soon. I don't want to hear any complaints. <clears throat> Keep an eye on your back. Hey there, got an update for me? Good work. Now I can let Masako know how much she'll enjoy watching the news tonight. Now, on to the next, right? Oh, but before I forget, the results of your Astral Lounge escapades are in. I'm happy to say that the deal was officially called off. Masako was very pleased with the outcome, so she arranged the bonus through Linden. Apparently, you said all the right things when it came to Arthur. Quantum Synergies actually reached out to us to negotiate the potential deal. You earned it. So, back to business. In order to stay on top of the market, we have to know what our competition is doing. The next assignment requires a more brute force approach, since the chances of them sharing that information is unlikely. Good. Luckily, there aren't many, besides the usual. Your target is a prototype schematic for a new engine that Trident Luxury Lines is working on. According to the rumors, it's projected to be 17% more efficient than any engine on the market. The current schematic was sent to their star yard to begin prototyping, so they could be in the office area or the factory floor. You'll find the Trident Luxury Lines star yard orbiting Aquila in the Cheyenne system. Remember, same rules apply. Don't get caught, and don't make a mess. Welcome to the Freestar Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. Scan complete. Go ahead and land.
Welcome to Freestar Space. We're gonna do a quick scan for contraband and you can be on your way. That's all we need. Enjoy Neo. Be careful. Just the person I wanted to see. You got that schematic? Good work. R&D's been looking forward to this one. I need to deliver this to Vina so she can start the reverse engineering process. But first, Ulara wants to see you. I've upgraded your security level so you can access the executive floor where her office is. Tell her assistant Maeve you have an appointment. I won't be far behind in case you get lost. I hate being stuck in the office. I heard about your run-in with Tomo. That guy won't be dead. I think that was the single most stressful experience of my life. Can I help you? Name and appointment. Confirmed. Ularu is wrapping up a meeting with Genevieve. You can wait here or in the lobby area. I'll let you know when she's ready to see you. I see Imogene Salso is supposed to be with you. I'm right here, Maeve. Good. It should just be a moment. Well, sooner than I thought. Looks like Ularu's ready now. Oh, one more thing. You know, if they aren't willing, that leaves us with only one option. God, Ularu, is that always your response? I don't want another PR mess on my hands. Yes, Viv, because you're too good at your job. Now, we can talk details later. My next appointment's here. Fine, but you can break this news to Alexis at our next meeting. Good, you're finally here. The one I've been hearing so much about. I'm Ularu Chen, head of operations here at Ryujin. So tell me, what do you think of your new job so far? In that case, it sounds like our initial impression of you is turning out to be quite accurate. Now, my dear genie here says you've been through the basics of what we do and pulled off success every time. Five successful standard assignments, and one specialized. And on top of all that, a flawless record. It's no wonder they love you up here. I happen to have a personal assignment that I'd like to send you on. One that involves meeting up with an outside contact. Genie seems to think you're more than capable of handling it. He's the best operative I've ever hired. <laughs> Let's not forget the only operative you've ever hired. Meeting with outside contacts isn't always as straightforward as your past assignments. Some can be fickle or demanding, so you'll need to decide how to handle them and what decisions to make on the fly. Good, because if not, I can't imagine we have much use for you here at Ryujin. Your contact is Simon Rychek. He claims to have information on a new project that Infinity LTD is working on. He said it's a game-changer that Ryujin would be especially interested in. So, his asking price is the big thing to consider. Finance will reimburse up to a thousand credits. So, if you have negotiation skills, use them. Oh, <laughs> you'll get the information if you want to hang on to your job. Now, in order to confirm your identity, Simon prefers code phrases. I'll let Jeannie give you the details on this one, because the concept is just beneath me. Simon is into sports, 
so he enjoys any opportunity to talk about them. At some point, he'll casually say, Looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You get to respond with, Razor Derby is the only real sport. Got it? You'll find him in Sidonia, so I hope your ship's fueled. Just look for him above the Lux condos in the plaza. You spoke very highly of this one, Genie. Let's hope he doesn't make a liar out of you. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some things to take care of. Thanks for the vote of confidence. I've got my eye on you. This could be the most in Lost, or just come to ask an out of work miner how his day's going. Eh, only good thing worth talking about these days is sports. Speaking of, looks like the Galactic Raiders are the number one pick for the Universal Championship this year. You're damn right it is. <laughs> I heard they were sending someone new. Nice to see you made it. I have information on a deal being proposed between Infinity LTV and Deimos Stockyards. It's my belief that your employers would be highly interested in the details. So I'm upping my price. It's steep, yes. But that is why I'm also offering a little side job if you can't pay up. Glad you see reason. As you may guess... Being an informant is not without its risks. I've heard there's a merc in Saturn's orbit who'd like to cross my name off her list. Malai Liskova. If you take her out and bring me her gun as proof, I'll consider my fee to be waived. Good. Malai's ship is called the Detura. And like I said, you can find her in orbit around Saturn. Just remember to bring the gun back as proof. That's about enough. Still, that's more like it. So, tell me what you're doing here. I'll decide whether or not to strip you for selfage.
going to enjoy this. Inspect your ship. For sure, have at it. Am I here? who survived the devil herself. Well, either that or you decided to pay up. Things aren't as easy when there's a history to consider. A moment's hesitation or a slip in judgment is just a bullet in the brain. Ooh. A world without Malila Skova. It's strange. Um... I always imagined I'd be happy knowing she's gone. Perhaps I've been running so long now that it will just take time for the relief to set in. <laughs> hmm. You know, why don't you keep that gun of hers? I think it's time I left the past behind. Yes, let's. Enough about the past. The information I have is on a deal for something called Project Dominion. I'm giving you two slates. They contain surveillance and interaction data for Stanley McMillan, the Infinity Rep, that I obtained myself. I'm also giving you a third slate because you're going to need to download the files on Project Dominion off his computer yourself. Nice doing business with you. Sidonia's impressive for what it is, but it's just not for me. No offense if you live here, but uh, I can't wait to get back to New Atlantis. Fresh air, plants. <sighs> At least the dome here lets in the sun, or I'm not sure how I'd make it. Definitely not me. At least I'm only here for a quick business trip. I tell you one thing. If I close this deal with Deimos, I'm doing all my celebrating at home. The Broken Spear is no viewport, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh, it's big all right. Infinity's onto something groundbreaking, and we're giving Deimos the first shot at buying in. If our predictions are right, this will put us ahead of even Ryujin Industries. Fingers crossed we still have some luck left. 
My boss recently closed a deal with Quantum Synergies, so, you know, things have been looking up. Hey, even the greats have to fall at some point. Keep an eye on SSNN over the next few months. We're gonna make it happen. What's up? I'm Manaki. Feel free to ask me anything and I'll do my best to help you out. Cool. That's what we do here. Constellation is no stranger to loss. Our own founder left on an expedition and never returned. It is easy to talk about the glory and excitement of breaching into the unknown, of lighting the darkness. But it is harder to stare into the face of the cost. That all of our progress is built on top of the lives of those who dared. And that we owe them the courage to continue our work in their memory. Thank you, Sarah. If anyone else would like to say a few words. Thank you. If anyone else wants to say something... I thought maybe I would come up with something to say, but I've... got nothing. So, instead... I thought I would quote something that gave me comfort a long time ago. Is God real? The more proper question would be, is reality divine? Existence itself is a mystery which yearns to be uncovered. What is goodness but a comparison to the good? What is existence but a participation in being? For where the diversity of the universe inspires awe and wonder, it exists only in contrast to a simplicity so pure that it may only be understood as primordial and even divine. Our essence is what was imagined by its mind, but what we consider imagining and what we consider mind are in fact so far beyond our understanding that even these metaphors are like the tiny white caps on a massive searching sea. 
There's more, but those are the parts that speak to me the most. I, um... Thank you. That was really thoughtful, Mateo. Thank you. Does anyone else want to say anything? My boy. I've lost my boy. I don't often speak about what I... Shouldn't be me buried in the ground. All I ever wanted to do was protect him. But no, he was out the door as soon as he could. Away from his mother, away from Aquila, away from me. Our friend is gone. Hey, how are you holding up? No god in heaven that is curating a perfect ending for me. Just don't no, forget dark. to take time for yourself, okay? We are what lives on. Plenty of rooms if you need to sit down and be alone for a while. We'll get through this. It might feel like everything's falling apart, but that's why we need to stick together. Humanity. We all have to get through this our own way. Don't worry about me. Really, I'll be fine. Joyful. Everyone is in mourning. I'd like to speak to you. I understand, but I cannot quite share in their emotion. I have seen death. I have lost people I considered close. But this is... It is not the same. I cannot explain why. I am not sure I am making sense. Thank you. I have chat for a bit. I Normally, I hate you. talking to people at funerals, when you have had but well, you, you don't believe in the afterlife, do you? I mean, this might be the worst time to bring it up. But Everything about us breaks down, decomposes, gets eaten. Somewhere deep down, I think. We all wish it's not true. But part of us knows there's no going back. Even if there is something in the beyond, it's not here, is it? Well, I've taken up enough of your time. It almost feels wrong to be grieving, selfish. No amount of tears will bring the dead back. The fact is that the universe goes on, the life goes on. It's just the easier to feel guilty, feel. if you'll excuse me. Yeah, we die. And so I hope this is all okay. Between fixing things up and sending out messengers and getting all the paperwork done, it's not much. Good. I... Good. Sorry, if I talk any longer, I'm gonna start crying. Um, could you excuse me? And who wouldn't want to be a part of infinity? Even if it's just for a short while. Listen, we don't worry about ourselves before we were born, do we? Of course not. We emerge from the universe as we return. I am told these types of gatherings are a sad occasion that assumption appears to be correct i appreciate you verifying my analysis although i am certain my thanks will do little to improve your current psychological trauma if you would like though i can add some consoling language to my programming It will take some time to adapt, but it will be okay. How was that? I will note that feedback for later. You know, what you're feeling right now is a chemical reaction whose evolutionary goal 
is promoting social cohesion. Never seems to work for me. No matter how many times I do this, I feel less attached, not more. Well, look at us. Two lone wolves howling at the moon on the same night. You know, if there's one piece of advice I can actually give you, it's that lost loved ones have a way of coming back to you. One day you'll be sweeping out some old shelf or digging through a desk and there it'll be. Some old paperweight of theirs. Or a piece of jewelry they gave you. Half jokingly. Theoretically, of course. You're welcome. Hey, stranger. Let's chat sometime, okay? Hi. So many people here. So many people saying goodbye. Huh. Are we supposed to feel better? Just because we're all in one place? What's the point? It's not going to change anything. Every day is going to be worse now. Don't you get that? I want to be alone for a while, okay? You one of Sam's Constellation people? Lillian Hart. He probably never mentioned me. I mean, I try not to talk about him, so... Oh, I'm sorry. That was a terrible thing to say. Um, Chorus Mother, Sam's ex. God, I'm rambling. Look, I don't know who I should speak to about this, but Cora and I talked, and she's coming to live with me. She talked about you all the time, but right now she just needs to get away from all the reminders of Sam. We'll be leaving soon, so say your goodbyes to her, if you like. Drink? Pour one out to the blackest sea? Two old friends. May their ghosts go past the edges of space, to the great beyond. Aye. Out of yours. Well, that took longer than expected. I hope whatever information Simon had was worth it. <laughs> Project Dominion? That can't be right. Give me a moment to run a decryption. Let's see. <laughs> Got the key, deciphering, and done. Well, well, well. <laughs> Looks like our friend Simon wasn't joking. Project Dominion isn't an Infinity LTD prototype. It's one of ours. <laughs> they didn't even bother to scrub the name. Meaning someone never thought they'd get caught. Come with me. Masako needs to hear about this.
p.m. Ularu? What is this about? Who is this? This is our latest junior operative. I sent him on an assignment to rendezvous with an informant. But here's the real news. Infinity LTD has gotten their hands on Project Dominion. Impossible. Not only that, they're trying to sell it under their own name. Of course they are. <sighs> we need fines to investigate this immediately. Since you found this information, I am trusting you to help investigate. You see, Project Dominion is confidential. It requires a high security clearance to even know it exists. If Infinity LTD has obtained any information on it, that means we have a very well-connected mole within our corporation. Exactly. I want you to go see Dalton Fines, our chief security officer. I'll send him the details. You've brought an enormous security violation to our attention, so I trust your help in any way possible. And thank you. Some operatives may have seized this as an opportunity for extortion. It's good to know your loyalty lies with us. My company's future might be riding on this deal. Good. You're here. So, thanks to your work in Sidonia, I'm told someone here has leaked information on Project Dominion to our adversaries at Infinity LTD. A mole within the company means a failing in my department. We're initiating Security Directive Theta, which means a full sweep of every employee in this building, Masako and myself included. We certainly are. Directive Theta has one unique case, and that's Ularu Chen. The Directive calls for a specialized programmer known as Nix to investigate her, but he'll need your assistance for an unusual assignment. We don't deal in trust here. Think more in terms of mutual benefit and leverage. And in this case, it's mutual benefit. Nix will be giving you a program to run on Ularu's computer that will pull any data needed to prove her guilty or innocent. Your job is to infiltrate Ryujin Tower as an anonymous outsider in order to run this program. Completely off the books. This means your keycard will be turned off and the security guards in the building will consider you to be trespassing. At least one of us is. In the meantime, I'll ensure all non-essential employees, Ularu included, have left the building, claiming routine security maintenance. During that time, I'll be unlocking access to the tower's ventilation system, which you can utilize to help avoid detection. I'm also issuing you a disruptor, which should help in avoiding casualties should a worst-case scenario turn up. Good. No one can know about this, not even our own guards. So stealth will be of utmost importance. You'll meet Nix at Madame Sauvage's place. He knows Directive Theta has been enacted. Don't cause any trouble. I've been waiting here for ages. This could be the most important meeting of my career.
Whoa, whoa, whoa. Bad part of town, buddy. I'm gonna do you a favor. Head back to Bayou Plaza before the disciples get you. Hey, it's your ass, not mine on the line. Whole area's gone to hell. Us crate rats used to think the ebbside strikers were awful, with all the muggings and shakedowns, but now that they're on the ropes, kinda wish they weren't just holed up in Madame Sauvage's. Streets are getting bad. Real bad. Sure, sure. So, for being so helpful, chance for a donation, come on, might be saving my life. What with the disciples and all? Have a heart. <laughs> Story of my life. You got an appointment? Cause if not, consider this area reserved. Oh yeah, Dalton's little errand runner. I've written up a program just for the occasion, but as Ryujin knows, it's yours for either a price or a favor. While you're snooping around in the tower, I just need you to hit up one more workstation on the way. It's Camden Cho's. Just run the same program on the slate I'll give you, and you're good. It's that simple. Suit yourself. So why don't we get back to that payment? Oh, I'm pretty sure it's not. Nobody wants that. Uh, you know, part of me could find some wiggle room. I hear you. All right, you win. No wonder Ryujin hired you. A pleasure, as always. Your job is simple. Just run this little beauty on Ilaro Chen's computer, and the program will take care of the rest. Once you're done, bring the slate back to me at my place. Whatever encryption Alaru has is bound to take some real work. More than my little setup here can handle. It's nice to see you know more than just sneaking around and talking a good game. Here's the slate. I'll be waiting. I wasn't doing anything.
Taking you down for questioning. <laughs> nice try, but the building is off limits. You sure didn't get in by any authorized means. Yeah, I hope so. I'm still willing to talk. Yeah. Yeah, I remember now. Nobody wants that. Look, I'll trust you. But if any of us catch you on another floor, we'll shoot first and ask questions later.
I'm swimming with the chasm bass. Plus, I already checked and it's locked. I'll never leave Neon. For someone in my business, there's no better place. So, you made it. Guess Ryujin's security really is slipping. <laughs> Just brimming with confidence, aren't you? But I've seen your work in the Trade Tower, so I'll at least give you some credit. Now, I'll take that program back that I gave you, and let's give the data a look. basically opens an all-access back door for me. I can see everything and anything, so let's take a look. Ularu has some impressive encryption on her files. Not that I can't crack it, of course. Circumventing protections, running decryption... This should just take a moment now. Damn, 
I'm good. That went faster than I thought. I'm saving several files to a slate for Dalton, including access history and anything related to Project Dominion. Adding a new encryption for him as well, so he's the only one that can view these. And done. You're all set. I've got the new encrypted slate. Let me tell you, it looks like fun times ahead for Ryujin. Technically, I'm not supposed to look, but it's kind of hard to not see what's going on while running all my software. You do that. Here's the slate. As usual, always a pleasure doing business with Ryujin. selling or moving yeah well then let me spell it out for you you either walked into the TA to buy some goods sell some goods or have some liberated goods taken off your hands for a reasonable price so instead of wasting my time making me explain how the business world works let's get a move on hey I never said stole you use that word not me Look, let's stop playing games. We both know what I'm talking about. And what'll it be? Now we're getting somewhere. Done here. Time to move on. Is there a type of weapon? I assume you were successful. I didn't get any incident reports last night, so I applaud your work. I expected as much. Now, let's see what we have here. Hmm. I didn't think it was possible. But someone's been accessing Laru's files remotely. It's quite a complicated trace, too. I'm impressed Nix was able to track all of this. Damn. And there's our culprit. Imogen Salzo, senior operations specialist, and one of the few I had in mind for who could pull this off. Well, she has the means, and access. But things are rarely so cut and dry. Well, before we make any harsh decisions, I'll need to question her myself. I want you to head to her office and escort her here. We have to make sure she doesn't try anything before I have a chance to speak with her. Good. When you're dealing with corporate workers, discerning the truth from the lies is the hardest part. Eugen certainly spared no expense on their exit. Try not to harass my texts too much. They have work to do. Let me guess. Looking for Imogene? I'm sure you can tell by now. She isn't here. 
Which is a shame, since I have several documents I need her to sign off on. She's always been the master of avoiding desk work. Well, that desk work is what keeps your cred stick full, and this company two steps ahead. So why are you looking for Imogene? Is she in trouble? Yeah, no thanks. Getting information out of Dalton is like talking to a wall. Besides, speculation is far more fun. I have Imogene's last location at Frankie's Grab and Go, which we all know is a front for the Sioka Syndicate. You'll want to get executive sign-off if you plan on chasing after her. I'd say Dalton is your best bet. Good. I'd hate to see what sort of drama might get stirred up if you went around him. Or maybe I'd love it. Keep the workplace interesting, right? <laughs> Good luck finding Imogene. Oh, and if you do catch up with her, be sure to let her know I had everything to do with it. If Alexis asks about me, I am not here. A gala at the new Atlantis Free Star Embassy. No Imogene, I see. Could she really be on to us already? Of course, Yuko would know. If Imogene's with the Syndicate, I can't just send you after her. You'll need to speak with Benjamin Bayou. We have to make sure he's aware of the situation. If we're lucky, he may even help us get to Imogene. Good. Because without it, this adds a complexity that we do not have time for. Head over to the Trade Tower and be discreet. Let Bayou know that you're there on Ryujin's behalf. He may ask for credits or even a favor. Just give him what he wants. The sooner the better. We don't want to give a clever mind like hers any more room than we have to. Just be sure to bring her back here in one piece. If she's truly the Mole, she'll have a lot to answer to. If she resists or tries to run, we have no choice but to take it as an admission of guilt. I'm afraid you'll have to dispose of her. Imogene has the potential to do this company a great deal of harm with her knowledge. She knows the consequences of betraying Ryujin, which makes her dangerous. If the situation does take a turn for the worst, I only ask that you perform a thorough search for any evidence she may have in her possession. I trust you won't let your past relationship cloud your judgment. My career will be over if this deal falls through. Call sending for anyone. What do you want? No. 
You can always make time when it comes to an old friend. So, what would be the reason? I may consider Ryujin an ally, but Dalton especially knows I don't give anything blindly. As long as it doesn't involve the Syndicate members themselves... I'll tell you what. I'll make sure the Syndicate lets you in hassle-free. Provided you do a little something for me. And what mutual benefit would that be? Of course. Ryujin's success always pays out when it comes to Neon Profits. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, I'd like to help, but... Uh... All right. You talk a good game. And I suppose if we're looking at a mutually beneficial situation, there's no reason for me not to allow such a small favor. Check in with Ms. Moore at Frankie's. I'll send word along that you're to be expected, so she shouldn't give you any trouble. Fair warning. The Syndicate should let you search any common areas, but if anyone catches you snooping around private quarters, I'll just say, be prepared for some hostilities. Need something? Hope you're a paying customer. Oh, you're the one getting special treatment. Huh. I knew you was some sort of trouble. I've got one rule for you in there, so it shouldn't be hard to remember. Third floor is off limits. They catch you snooping around, and it's open season. That's what I like to hear. For the record, I'm only granting you access because I have to. You'll find that young lady you're looking for holed up in a room almost straight ahead. Just remember to keep your eyes on the prize. The less you consider this an open house, the better. Websites change. Try anything, you're dead. No funny business. I figured our paths would cross sooner or later. Not that I thought I was safe, but never expected anyone to just slip by all this syndicate here. I had a feeling you'd be the one to come after me. I know this doesn't look good, but I had no choice. Ularu set me up. Yes, I've been acting as a double agent, but because she ordered me to. The assignment was meant to deceive, not benefit. And Project Dominion is way above my pay grade. It'd be impossible for me to deliver it. At least, intentionally. Look, I only know about Project Dominion because I wanted to know exactly what I was being accused of leaking. But that tech is dangerous. An internal neuroamp that can theoretically control other people? If the evidence points to me, it's because Ularu used it to set me up. 
what better way to frame someone than to take control of their mind and have them actually perform the actions? It's the only scenario that makes sense. Besides, what's my motive? My career is solid at Ryujin. Infinity can't possibly beat my current benefits. Believe me, after having to play double agent, I've learned all of this firsthand. That's exactly what I've been doing here. Ularu has the skill to pull this off, but she's also been behind the desk for years now. I knew she'd miss something. This slate holds all the evidence against her. I just need you to deliver it to Dalton. It's the only way I can prove I'm innocent. I was hoping you would. I'm still going to lay low until I hear the coast is clear. As long as Ularu still thinks I'm on the run, she'll remain confident that her plan is working. And I know you don't hear it much around the office, but thanks. Well, look who's back. So tell me, what did you find out? <sighs> I had a feeling you'd say that. Enjoy your time with Dalton. It'll all trickle back to me sooner or later. They know how to make a claim. You're back. And Imogene? So you did find her, and yet failed to bring her in. I'm looking forward to this explanation. If I'm not mistaken, you appear to be on her side. Not that I blame you. But if Imogen really wants to prove her innocence, she better be prepared to face a strict interrogation. Now, I need to undertake the laborious task of writing up a report to summarize all of this. In the meantime, Masako has requested your presence in R&D. She wants you to meet her in Vinacara's office. Once I've examined this evidence, I may need your help in moving forward. And not a word about this to anyone. I'll present what I have to the board once I've completed a full report. I've got my eye on you. This deal could be huge for my company. I've been waiting here for ages. cause any trouble. I need that rothesite if we want to come Good. Now. You're here. It's time to put a plan in motion to take full control of this situation with Infinity LTD. In due time, 
We don't know to what extent infinity has taken the current NeuroAMP schematics. So our top priority is completing our own. Let me introduce you to Vina Kalra, head of research and development. She'll give you the initial details. Yes, details. You see, the internal NeuroAMP is supposed to consist of two parts. The first part, the part Infinity stole, handles the manipulative effects. The second part is a shielding modification designed to protect the user against other NeuroAMP users. Oh yeah, marketing and finance wouldn't have it any other way. No one wants their greatest asset used against them. Once Vina can complete the internal NeuroAMP and shielding mod, the plan is to outfit you with both and have you infiltrate Infinity LTD. We can't risk the assignment until we know your mind has the necessary protection. Good. That's all I wanted to hear. And all I need is the last piece of the puzzle. The final kink in both designs was finding compatible materials to use for conductivity that the human body wouldn't reject. I've finally created the perfect alloy, but it requires a newly discovered refined element called rothesite. Which is where I come in. We have a confidential contract with Consolidated Mining to gather, refine, and ship the rothesite straight to us. Their last shipment is late, and neither we nor Consolidated Mining have had any communication with the Karanay Station. Correct. The updates have been regular up until now. Last we heard, the shipment was ahead of schedule. We need you to head out there, secure the shipment, and bring it back here so Vina can complete her prototype. And... I want to know what happened. We need to take any safety measures to make sure this doesn't happen again. The mining station is CM Station RC-1. It's on a moon called Karen A-3A in the Karen A system. The shipment should be in the research and control tower, but the outside doors are kept locked down. This keycard will let you enter the mines so you can access the tower from the inside. Good luck. Remember to be prepared. The entire station was wiped out by something. Don't worry, we'll figure it out. I have some excellent weapons on sale today. Hey, thanks for stopping by. The name's Ken. Let me know if you have any questions. I know these weapons like the back of my hand. I can't say I'm surprised. You have the look of someone with a steady hand and a good eye. If you've never tried an Arboron firearm, I highly recommend them. They fire more smoothly than Laredo weapons, and they're not as bulky as Combatex models. You can't go wrong. What brings you to Ryujin Tower today? Ah, fellow employee. Nice gig, right? Working here beats the hell out of most jobs I've had in Neon. I think you'll be impressed. We only carry the best at Arboron. Bye now. Feel like me? You should have seen the... No problem. I'm sure you'll find something you like. Tell everyone you know about our store.
private sector. Now that's where the real money's at. You have a nice day now. This area's off limits. Authorized personnel only. Yeah, I bet you do. Nobody wants that. I'm trying to be reasonable here. Nobody wants that. I'm trying to be reasonable here. Fine, I'll issue you an access card. Infinity better get it together. Hey, who let you in here? This is a restricted area. I don't need to tell you anything. This whole wing is restricted. I think you need to leave before I'm forced to call security. You think I'm just gonna give you confidential information? Nobody wants that. I haven't agreed to anything yet. Maybe we can. Maybe it's all worth working out. All right. Maybe there really is some good that can come out of this. We're on a private contract with Infinity LTD. It's for something they call Project Dominion. Dr. Lane and I were instructed to conduct human trials on several... volunteers. So far, only one patient has survived. You're telling me? When Infinity hired us, they said human trial authorization was already underway and we'd have the approvals in a matter of days. <laughs> the days went by and nothing. Every time we'd ask, it was always just days away, but we kept working. Between the money and potential success, it was easy to tell ourselves that they'd come through. Sean, what the hell is going on here? Who is this? It's moments like these when I think I just need to hear someone say it out loud. Sean spoke the truth. We thought the approval would arrive any day, so we continued with the project. By the time we started to catch on, it was already too late. We were too immersed in the lie. You... you really think that's possible? Oh, it's good to know you see it that way. The public would not be as kind. Neither would our peers. Go ahead and do whatever you need to do. You can have full access to my computer. And thanks. As much as I was ready to commit career suicide, the very thought terrified me. I never should have put my pride before the lives of others. I'm not sure if those Baroon zealots live in space. Welcome to the Free Star Collective. Please maintain your current course while we scan your ship. All right, we're done. Have a good time in Neon. Those supplies were sorely needed. Thanks again for getting them to me. What can Reliant Medical do for you? Let me look you over. Honestly, I'm surprised you're walking around like this. I won't lie. You're gonna feel this. But try your best to sit still. There. Good as new. More or less. If you need help, remember Reliant. Seems like the crew's off.
got my eye on you. Nice to catch you in the office. Is that my beautiful shipment? You were right about this one, Masako. Looks like it. This should be more than enough. Now, I shall excuse myself and get to work on finalizing this prototype. So, what did you learn about CM Station RC-1? Hmm. Lucas must be desperate if he hired them to collect the Rothesite. Were there any survivors? Good. I may not condone murder, but I refuse to have sympathy for indiscriminate killers like Ecliptic. Especially after massacring innocents working for us. Now, I also had a report that you were spotted at the clinic. I take it you traced the shipment there? I figured it was related. And were you able to determine the purpose of this secure wing? So, it sounds like Lucas has reached a new level of desperation to ensure his future as CEO. I'll make sure Yuko's team extracts every bit of information they can from the clinic's database on this. I see. Should we use any of this information to expose Infinity LTD? I can keep their names confidential. Between hiring Ecliptic and unauthorized human trials, we have enough to take Lucas down for good. And with the Rothesite secure, it's almost time for us to make our move. Head up to the executive floor and speak to Dalton. He has an update for you on the Mole's identity. I've called a meeting and I expect you to attend. It's time to put the final plan in motion. Hey there. Don't cause any trouble. Good. You're right on time. I reevaluated all the evidence. It took every resource I had, but the final answer is clear. Ularu is the mole. Yes. You made the right call. I've briefed Masako and discussed her plans on handling this. While we both agree Ularu is guilty, we need irrefutable evidence before presenting this to the board. For now, we lead everyone to believe that Imogene was the mole, and the situation was dealt with. The people we're dealing with will expect nothing less. Masako has tasked Ularu with writing the program to bring down Infinity LTD. We believe she'll take the chance to incriminate Masako within the program. So this could provide the evidence we're looking for. You will be tasked with the assignment to infiltrate Infinity. So before you go, I want you to bring that program to me. Good. Once Ularu believes she's properly deflected any suspicion, I have no doubt she'll be bold enough to hide something within whatever program she writes. Now, let's attend a meeting. We called you all together to discuss a recent security breach. We discovered a mole within the company who leaked vital information about Project Dominion to Infinity LTD. You've got to be kidding me. Just don't tell me it's Vina. I think we've all noticed she's not here. Before you speculate any further, no, it's not Vina. 
The guilty party is Imogene Salzo, much to my disappointment. Our operative here obtained the evidence to confirm it. Dalton, how does something like this happen? Imogene is highly trained. Ularu can even speak to that. We demand the best. So that's the threat we deal with. I may have well-trained operatives, but security is your responsibility, Dalton. This is a huge failing on your part. I accept the responsibility, but let's not forget. The mole has already been exposed and dealt with. Well, of course. Thanks to another of my operatives. I know you're not insinuating that this is my fault. Imogene's been dealt with, so bickering is pointless. All I care about is reacquiring our property and what this might be costing us financially. Vina is completing the internal NeuroAmp prototype as we speak. Our operative will receive the implant, infiltrate Infinity LTD, and obtain any and all research. I have it on good authority, the experimentations they've done to replicate the missing pieces of our work have resulted in fatalities. I can't imagine the mess their legal department has on their hands. If I may make a suggestion, we should give this evidence to David at SSNN. It's the best neutral method of releasing this information to the general public. That'd make my job easier. David it is, then. Chris Echo, the internal neuroamp is ready if you want to send down the candidate. I hope you're ready for this. And that's precisely why I know we can count on you. Vina will be waiting for you in the Neuroamp division in R&D. Once you're done, meet me in my office. Be ready to discuss the details of your next assignment. My career will be over if this deal falls through. Are you sure you're okay? You left pretty far. Criminal activity in this area. Double check those measurements are right. A cursory scan of your vital signs. Ah, here's my lucky candidate. I hope you're ready to embark on one amazing journey. Oh, don't worry. That's not on the agenda. Now, just a few details before we begin. Obviously, we'll be putting you under. I'll be making a small incision in the back of your skull where the internal neuroamp will be fitted. The whole procedure should only take three to four hours with little to no downtime afterwards. Provided DeMarcus got everything entered correctly. Did I not just say I quadruple checked the numbers? You know I'm just giving you a hard time. Besides, I've got to make sure my patient is reassured. Eh, you're gonna be fine. All I'm saying is that you're in good hands. Now, just lie down on the table once you're ready, and we should be good to go. All right, let's get this party started. Well, well, look who's finally up. The operation was a success, obviously. Once you're able to refocus, let me know how you're doing. So, how are you feeling? You look good? That's exactly what we want. 
Just a couple quick notes before using the internal neuroamp. First, you can only influence one person at a time. And second, the effect is temporary, so be prepared if you use it in a combat situation. Great. Now let's test this sucker out. Demarcus has graciously volunteered for science, he says. That's the spirit. Demarcus loves being hands-on and experiencing things on his own. It's probably why he's the second most published scientist here, after me. Just head up the stairs nearby to the observation deck. <laughs> so what do you research and develop up here anyway? Oh my god, that was incredible! Name what was it like? Product and someone oh. is probably working on it. How to describe it? For one minute I was excited about seeing how the experiment would go. Ah, the next, so I had a brief moment so of disorientation and figured I must have lost yeah. my train of thought. It felt eerily natural. And yes, I admit it, just as you predicted. I'm sure the I knew it, I knew it, I knew it! I can hardly wait to finish writing up my latest dissertation. And you owe me a hundred creds. I'll be keeping myself under constant surveillance now. I'm curious if any other side effects may manifest. <laughs> so, tell me all about it. How did it feel? Any side effects? Yes. Good. Hear that, Demarcus? That's two for two now. I heard. I heard. It really was fascinating how all I experienced was a moment of disorientation. It's truly remarkable tech. When it comes to your job, you bet it does. Uh, besides, the neuro amp is not total control. If a subject's morals or beliefs in something are strong enough, we still see points of failure. That being said, it's been interesting to discover the actions our subjects sanction in their own minds. Okay, okay. As much as I'd love to go over the details and potential of this amazing piece of technology I created, Masako wants to see you. It sounds like you have an assignment to complete, and Demarcus and I have a lot of notes to record. Hey, welcome to R&D. Where the hell did I put that torch? You're here. I wasn't sure how accurate Vina's promise of no downtime was going to be. Let's just hope her promise of no brain damage holds true as well. Now that you've been outfitted with the internal neuroamp, it's time to put that tech to work. We're sending you into Infinity LTD. Lucas Drexler is about to learn exactly why you don't steal from Ryujin Industries. And wish he shall, every day, while he rots away in prison. All right, 
Yuko has provided a layout of Infinity LTD. You have two options for this assignment. We'll be providing you with the means for both. Option A, you gain entry through their maintenance access on the roof. Option B, we give you an assigned identity and arrange a meeting for you. As long as you're prepared when the time comes. Now, depending on your preference, you'll either find yourself in the maintenance hallway or the marketing department. From there, you have three targets. First, you have Lucas Drexler's computer, located in his office on the executive floor. Second is Faye Sengsavan's computer, in research and development. And third, you need to obtain the prototype they are working on, also in R&D. As you can see, you've several floors to traverse. So I hope you're prepared for an adventure. That's what we're counting on. Now, I had Ularu create a program that you need to run on both Lucas and Faye's computers. I'll let her explain the details. You see, once we expose Infinity LTD, all of their data is going to come under intense scrutiny. We only want the public to know about their mercenary hires and unauthorized human trials, but Project Dominion needs to remain confidential. I've created an overseer program that will gather all the evidence we need, and at the same time delete anything relating to Ryujin and the internal NeuroAmp. Exactly. And what the public doesn't know, doesn't hurt them. Now we don't want to mess on this one. A body count will only distract from what we're trying to accomplish here. Simon Rychek provided some useful info on how to evacuate civilians from the building. I'm sure you remember him from Sidonia. Infinity's maintenance crew is understaffed. It's only a matter of time before pressure gauges go unchecked and they have a massive issue on their hands. Once that pressure becomes too much, every floor in the building is going to suffer from gas leaks, setting off an automated alarm to evacuate the building. Simon was able to get a passcode for you to access their system's computer, so you can force the heating system to fail. I'd highly advise you use it. This assignment isn't the time to test your abilities. The only thing you're out there to prove is that you can get this job done. We're also issuing you an operative suit. It should help reduce their ability to detect you. These suits are typically reserved for the senior ranks, but we want to reduce as much risk as possible. And that's what we're hoping for. If you can pull this off, even I'll be impressed. Once you've run the Overseer program and obtained the prototype, your final step is to deliver the slate to David Barron at the SSNN field office. If he asks questions, feel free to give him just enough information to pique his interest, but no mention of Ryujin or who you are. SSNN is used to anonymous tips. They'll do whatever verifications they deem necessary on their own to confirm the story. It certainly will, and we'll have front row seats. So, any final questions before you go? Good luck, and be sure to report directly back to me when you return. Here's Simon's passcode, your operative suit, the Overseer program, and your cover identity. Your cover ID card is encoded with roof entry and elevator access, so that's your ticket in either way. Don't screw this up, Skylar Lumen. My company's future might be riding on this deal. Do you have the program? I'm certain Ularu won't pass up this opportunity. So, let's take a look. Aha! The decryptions hit a snag. There's definitely something here. 
This is exactly what we needed. According to this code, Ularu intended to plant false evidence that would show Masako was working with Lucas. The moment you launched the Overseer program, a series of fabricated communication files would have been uploaded to the Infinity LTD network. One of them even frames Masako for encouraging Lucas to push for early human trials. I'm going to copy the necessary files off this slate and issue you a new one. I want to keep this one intact, so Alaru can't dispute it. All right. Now, we finally have the evidence we need to prove Olaru's guilt. Yes. And had you not brought this program to me in the first place, you would have been the one planting the false evidence. Without that falsified evidence, Olaru is in for a big surprise. I fully expect she'll be eagerly awaiting SSNN's broadcast, anticipating Masako to be accused alongside Lucas Drexler. Here's the new slate with the revised Overseer program. Let's get this assignment finished the right way. Keep out of my way and I'll keep out of yours. Can I help you? I'm Kendall Marks from Kero. Can we run through it one more time?
essential personnel must evacuate the building. Please find the nearest exit and contact emergency services.
We're close to the action here in New Atlantis. Prime position to report on the big stories that affect the United Colonies. Can I help you? <laughs> Is that so? Spoken like a true tabloid reporter. What's this so-called story about? Corporate greed claims victims once more. And you have evidence to support this claim. Perfect stranger or not, we won't air anything without some sort of hard evidence. I don't suppose you want to tell me how you got this evidence. Well, you can't blame me for trying. Is there at least a name I can cite as my source? Why am I not surprised? As long as the evidence is adequate and verifiable, I expect it'll be aired within the hour, if not sooner. Now, if you'll excuse me, I obviously have some work to do. I've yet to hear anything of note on SSNN. Let's hear your report. Good. David won't be able to resist a story like this. He'll do some preliminary confirmations, which will be enough to get the broadcast out to the public. And how did the NeuroAmp perform? I thought it would be. So now it's just a waiting game for SSNN to break the news. Once the story airs, we have another board meeting scheduled to decide how to handle Infinity. Go ahead, Maeve. The SSNN broadcast has started. Shall I patch it through? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Infinity LTD and Lucas Drexler are currently under investigation for a number of violations, including murder for hire, unauthorized human trials, and corporate theft. Authorities representing the UC and the Freestar Collective have been dispatched to a consolidated mining station and the clinic. Both locations are believed to hold numerous victims. Drexler's motivation appears to be an attempt to launch a new product based off stolen information from a competitor. The details on the project itself and the competitor have yet to be confirmed. This has been David Barron for SSNN. Perfect. This exposure puts Infinity right where we want them. The meeting will begin momentarily, but I want you to discuss the options we have with the other members. Infinity's net worth is about to hit rock bottom. So this gives us the opportunity to win a little more public faith. Quite right. The truth is, we'll be making evaluations. We'll shed any employees who don't make the cut, slowly but surely. By incorporating Infinity, we eliminate a competitor, get their best employees and contracts, and all while boosting our public perception. I'm glad we're on the same page. Which is why I'd like you to talk to the board to convince them this is the right move. There are several who might disagree and you have the perfect tool to help sway them. Good. You'll find most of the board members in their offices preparing. Vina is also here, waiting for the meeting to start. We'll need at least 50% of the vote to go our way. 
In the event of a tie, I will make the final decision. I trust you'll get it done. Keep out of my way, and I'll keep out of yours. Did Masako send you to try and convince me to acquire Infinity LTD? I think we both know that's not going to work. Our public perception is good enough. If you ask me, reaching out to save Infinity just makes us look weak. The internal neuroamp gives us the power to crush our competitors, not take them under our wing. This is exactly why Masako's time as CEO is finished. Good. If you use that neuroamp wisely, it will guarantee that Infinity gets shut down. Uh, well, it does make Ryujin look good. And we do gain a wider customer base, which means higher profits. You're oddly right about this one, Op. I guess you are worth keeping around. As long as everyone has Ryujin's best interests in mind, this should make for an interesting meeting. An issue? That would be a foolish move. Dalton and Alexis are the only two against it. You'd never get the rest to shut it down. Dangerous indeed. For all I know, you're using it right now. The irony. Perhaps I didn't see it earlier, but you're right. The moment a competitor reverse engineers Vina's work, it'll be chaos. The last thing I want is to have my brain scrambled because some engineer didn't do their due diligence. Now, if you'll excuse me, I still have a lot of preparations to make. If only there were more hours in the day. If you need something, make it quick. I'd like to make sure my arguments are solid before this meeting. You heard correct. I've every reason to believe that Infinity LTD is the Pandora's box of corporations. All right, I could use the entertainment. Tell me why Infinity is a good asset. When it comes to profit, I suppose all my arguments do fall short. Huh. Well, what do you know? I think you just convinced me. Talent like yours belongs in the courtroom. Don't even get me started. First off, if I find out you use that device on me, I will tie you up in court on whatever charges I can conjure for the rest of your life. Second, that tech is one major human rights violation that no legal team wants to fight. I'll do whatever I can to make sure it's either severely delayed or collects dust in storage. Well, I'm both glad and surprised to hear the one person who has one say that. Masako is lucky to have you at her disposal, you know? You may be the greatest asset, aside from the internal neuroamp, that Ryujin has. This exchange has been surprisingly insightful. But now, I really do need to get back to my notes. This meeting should prove to be very interesting. I assume Masako briefed you on her preferred outcome. That's because you're the one with the tool to do it. As long as Masako has the internal neuroamp on her side, she can't lose. If it were up to me, I'd have shut down Project Dominion a long time ago. I knew it was a grave security risk, and look what happened. You read my mind. Let's just hope Masako and the others see it that way. 
Plus, if we vote to acquire Infinity LTD, we're about to add a significant workload onto my team. The last thing I want to deal with are any more incidents this new neuroamp might cause. I imagine we're looking at months of work. Infinity LTD is obviously not known for their security. I only hope that Masako and the others will be patient with the process. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some preparations to make. We'll be announcing Ularu's termination of employment at this meeting, so I need to have security ready to escort her off the premises. Is Masako checking up on me to make sure I'm on her side? In this business, there's always a side. And right now, I'm backing Masako. We just need to grab Infinity LTD while it's got the public's full attention. I'm all about free PR, especially when it's painting us in a good light. I'm sure I can squeeze enough goodwill out of this to last us at least a year. All right, I suppose you've earned the right to voice your opinion after everything you've done, qualified or not. So let's hear it. The possible backlash on tech like this is not lost on me. However, the internal neuroamp will define the next era of tech with Ryujin at the forefront. It's not an opportunity you just walk away from. You're right. The moment you violate your customer's trust, there's a good chance they'll never come back. Even worse, you push them into the hands of your competitors. Well, it seems your talents really do stretch beyond just being an operative. Good talk. Maybe I'll even consult you on future endeavors. I hope you're enjoying your new Neuroamp. And how's my favorite patient doing? Not seeing any temporal memory flashes or losing time, I hope. Oh, well, at least tell me what you think of the Neuroamp. I hope you're not actually suggesting that the technology I spent years working on and perfecting never sees the light of day. This is groundbreaking work. My life's work. Fine, fine. Make your case. And both of those applications would be great for Ryujin and humankind. Well, this conversation's made me feel like a proper monster. But you're right. In a perfect world, tech like this is used for good. But this world is far from perfect. It is. It really is. For years, my only focus has been, is this possible? And then, how do I make it work? I never stopped to consider if it was right, or what it would mean. I guess it'll be up to a vote either way. It's not on the meeting agenda, so I assume you'll bring it up yourself? We just have to hope the others will see reason. So the next question is, what will the fate of Infinity LTD be? Exactly. Not that I want to gloat over it. Maybe just a little. Okay. So, DeMarcus and I have really been looking forward to it, so fingers crossed this deal goes through. Well, this has certainly been the most interesting conversation of my day. All we can do now is look forward to the meeting, right? See you in there. You're looking... interesting today. Just the person I wanted to see. I want to get all the details locked down for this meeting, and I believe you to be one of the best sources available. Good. I prefer first-hand feedback when available. You've had the chance to encounter members of Infinity LTD throughout your assignments here. Do you think they're worth redemption? And why? Saving the jobs of thousands is altruistic, which is not a luxury corporations have. It's a financial burden. It would be a huge undertaking on my part. This is true. 
Infinity never had the financial resources to match our salary offers. Getting what few capable employees they have at half the salary we typically pay here could have major payoffs in the long run. Next question. What is your opinion on how Masako handled the mole situation? And why do you feel it was well handled? Please note I'm not disagreeing. I just want to know the why behind your statement. I agree. Should Masako had informed us too early, we may have all turned on each other. I appreciate the insight. I suppose I should ask if there's anything I can do for you, considering how helpful you've been. It's only dangerous to those who can't afford one. Hence the added motivation that will bolster sales. I think we all know how averse I am to chaos. Finances are my forte, so you make a good point. Our competition has yet to truly master Neuroamps, but the possibility is there. It's a risk I am unwilling to take. At this time. This has been rather enlightening for me. I appreciate the time. All right, everyone. As you all know, we've successfully exposed Infinity LTD's botched human trials and murder for hire through SSNN. <sighs> the public is demanding their leadership, namely Lucas Drexler, face trial. And he's probably writing his resignation as we speak. Ryujin will be launching a statement, but I believe now is the perfect time to acquire Infinity LTD. Believe it or not, I agree. The acquisition has risks, and it's going to create a lot of work for all of us. But the overall payoff will be worth it. That, and Infinity LTD's current situation, makes them more affordable than ever. Arguments? None? Excellent. Moving on, then. I think what we're all overlooking is what led us to this situation to begin with. Yes, our security was compromised. But considering Dalton was hired by Masako, the issue obviously starts at the top. In fact, I propose that Masako be removed from CEO altogether. Ularu, this isn't a line you want to cross. And considering you're the mole, if anyone's going to be removed from power, it's going to be you. Hold up. Are you saying you lied to us? Dalton, the last meeting we had, you distinctly said Imogene was the mole, and she'd been dealt with. Do you even have any proof to back up this outrageous claim? Of course we do. The malicious code you hid on this slate to upload incriminating evidence against Masako onto Lucas Drexler's computer. To put it bluntly, Ularu, you're fired. Security will hold you in your office until a proper exit interview can be done. This isn't right. I should at least have the opportunity to resign. And allow you to still be marketable to a competitor? I don't think so. This may be news to me, and I will be reviewing the evidence closely. But this isn't something you just get to walk away from. Security, 
Escort Miss Chen to her office, and see that she stays put. You'll regret this. All of you. I believe the only regret would be trusting you to begin with. All right. Back to business. All in favor of acquiring Infinity LTD? Aye. Good. Alexis, start drawing up the necessary documentation. Anyone have anything else they'd like to bring up? The internal neuroamp is a key component of Ryujin Industries' success for the next ten years, if not more. Why would we shelve it after we've finally perfected it? I can't believe I'm saying this, but he's right. Regardless of the pros, the cons are too morally and ethically irresponsible to move forward with. The moment the public gets wind of the true capabilities of this tech, we're gonna suffer severe backlash. Very well. All in favor of shelving Project Dominion? Aye. Aye. Vina, prep Project Dominion for storage. Any other matters to bring forth? None? This concludes our order of business for today. So much work to do. <laughs> you operatives really- Shelving the internal neuroamp. Not the outcome I anticipated. The truth remains. Lucas Drexler learned a hard lesson, and we exposed a traitor among us. You've proven yourself to be quite the asset here at Ryujin. It's well-earned and deserved. I truly appreciate the work you put into exposing Ularu. No operative has ever had to investigate our own to the extent that you did. I can imagine it may have been a lot of pressure, considering you were fairly new at the time. My thought exactly. Imogene's instincts were right about you. Now, as promised, I have your bonus. I hope you'll find it appropriate for all you've done. And I'm promoting you to senior operative. <laughs> you've more than earned it. It's well deserved. As for the details, I think someone back on the operations floor would prefer to explain those to you. Ryujin CEO is no joke. I better do this right. I don't want you go breathing down my neck about it. You've certainly shaken things up around here. I still can't believe Ularu tried to frame me. An obvious misjudgment on my part. But now that's all in the past. It's time to get back to your typical day-to-day. -day. And I'd say it's good to be back if I hadn't returned to a mountain of paperwork. Now, since you were new, you've been dealing with people, but most of our assignments are generated on the mission board. The board holds any available assignments that our techs have pieced together, and I've approved. Questions? Good. The mission board is generally self-explanatory anyway. With your promotion, you've earned yourself an office, so whenever you're ready, you can find your own personal mission board inside. And the best perk of them all, you're free to make your own hours. Oh, and uh, congratulations, of course. You certainly will. Go check out the board. And if you have any questions, I suppose I can start up an open door policy just for you.
Hey, congrats on the promotion. You should have seen the look. No problem. Tell everyone you know about our store. Hey, what can I do for you? Sure, how about it?
searching. Please do not interfere with my tasks.
each other for the artifacts. As always. I'm sorry it's come to this. More talking? I'm a little disappointed. No. Wait. I want to hear this. Fine. Before you say anything, no. Invoices can be collected from the... Oh. Not here for a delivery, are you? Do you now? Well, I do wish I could help you, Captain, but Dr. Walker has been missing for some time. A shame, too. We had such high hopes for Percival. I brought him on myself to do medical and biological consulting around the city. Not the sort of work the Trade Authority traditionally does. But we thought it had the potential to become a whole new type of revenue stream for our branch. I invested no small amount of personal capital into the endeavor. But then he decided to run off after a... discipline issue. I presume the miners have him hidden somewhere. Plenty of cracks on this old rock. But at this point, it's probably for the best. That won't be necessary. The Trade Authority isn't interested in employing someone so unreliable. But we would like the money he owes us. If you can convince him to pay his debts, we'd be most grateful. Wonderful. I suggest paying a visit to the Sixth Circle. 
what I suppose is technically a bar on the lowest level of the city. If anyone knows where Percival is, the miscreants there would. But I would urge caution. They're not a group known for their hospitality. Broken spears upstairs. Go drown yourself there. This bar is for devil's vets and their kin. Doc Walker? Well, you're barking up the wrong... Andy, you. Why don't you come here and tell me what some stray wants with Walker? Not every day a stray topsider wanders into my bar claiming they know people. What do you want with Dr. Walker? That's so. Hmm. Now if that tag's a forgery, it's a damn good one. All right. Maybe she did send you. Or maybe you just know where to buy your fakes. But look, even if I decided I was going to help you get in contact with Dr. Walker, Percival made himself scarce for a reason. His debt to the Trade Authority. But if someone resolved that debt, well, Percival wouldn't have to hide anymore. Can bet that person would make a friend out of Percival, and the rest of us devils. And I'm always inclined to help a friend. That's good to hear. Now, you want my opinion? The most straightforward way to take care of this debt would be to just saunter up to the Authority and pay him direct, if you've got credits to throw away. Of course, rumor is the Trade Authority keeps all their records, and collections files, on a central server inside their storeroom. If someone was to break in there and adjust Percival's debt to something a little more reasonable, say, a few hundred credits, I'd be happy to cover the costs. But, uh, one friend of Hadrian's to another, Sidonia's full of old utility spaces. Wouldn't be surprised if there was one that let out right into the Authority storeroom. Say, with an entrance behind the bar at the Broken Spear. Ooh, and you might need these. Now, what say you get out there and help Dr. Walker? Hey, you may be Hadrian's friend. Come here. Heard you talking with Lou, so you're going to help Dr. Walker? Oh, good, good. Oh, Percival's a good guy. Listen, I know how you can do it without having to resort to any... B and E. Aqueous hematite. Mars is full of it. People think it's just garbage, but Percival and I, we've been working on some projects in the deep mines. At least when he wasn't slaving away at his trade authority contract. But we stumbled on a way to make it useful and profitable. You give our research over to Octai at the trade authority, it should more than cover Percival's debt. That guy's always looking for an angle. Well, yeah. We were never able to finish the research. Spacers moved in and ran us out. Started setting up shop. But if you can clear them out, I can walk you through how to finish the research. Then you can give it over to the Trade Authority. They'll get folks working in the deep mines again. Jobs come back, I become a modern day folk hero. <laughs> then I don't have to sleep on an inflated spacesuit anymore. Great, great. So access to the deep mines can be found outside the city. It's not far, shouldn't even need to hop back in your ship. We'd set up right near the main drill. Taking out the spacer leader should get the message across to the rest of them to buzz off. Once you've managed that, phone up here on the comms panel, and I can walk you through finishing the research.
buddy Mitch keeps asking if I can go out with him.
care of the spacers, huh? Good. Now to finish off the research, you're gonna need to collect a sample of hematite to run through the pressure. Grab a little bit of and head back to the chamber where you came in. Once you've got a sample, the pressure's the big machine in the next room.
shite miner who walks in here fancying me for lack of better options is gonna need enhanced to put their face back together. <sighs> Let me guess. You're here because you were working a cutter, accidentally nipped your thumb off, and you need me to reattach it again? I can't honestly tell if you're being serious or not. But you're standing, so it must not be that bad. And I'll take anything over another workplace accident. <sighs> Sorry. I tend to think the worst, since the overwhelming majority of my patients come here to treat entirely preventable accidents. I know it's my job to help people, and I love doing it, but I do wish they'd be a little more careful down in the mines. I'm Dr. Flynn. What can I do for you today? Okay, one moment while I look you over. Oh, not good. Not good at all. You're gonna need a lot of care. A stitch here and a stitch there. You'll be right as rain. All right. You're good to go. Now stay safe out there. Well, you're not missing a limb or bleeding out on me floor. So I'm happy to help. Bollocks. Is that how I come off now? Ah, oh, work's getting to me, I suppose. It's just... You see, no one on this bloody planet seems to follow basic safety precautions. It's always, Dr. Flynn, reattach me <coughs> arm, or help me with this frostbite. Well, maybe if you took the time to properly dress yourself for the outside, you wouldn't be losing your fingers, you Egypt. Sorry for the rant, just... Just for a change, I'd rather be treating the common cold, and not some horrific yet entirely preventable accident. Stay healthy! New development for embattled infinity. Infinity value is still at free. Got the slate? Let me see. Reduce joint wear? Oh, increase lifting capacity? A dose of this stuff could make a miner way more efficient. This formula's gotta be worth at least as much as whatever Percival owes. Okay, so here's what you do. Tell Octai and the Trade Authority you found a business proposal that will make miners more efficient, higher yield, synergy, you know, all that business crap. And that you'll trade it to him for clearing Percival's debt. You good at doing pitches and stuff like that? Oh, this is gonna be great. Oh, and here, a copy of the formula for yourself, in case you ever wanna try maximizing your own industrial output. Oh, use that if you can. Good luck. Was there something else? Hmm. I'm never one to turn away an opportunity. But I'd be curious what you think you've uncovered in the Martian market that others have missed. Aqueous hematite, iron and wastewater. Well. I'm not surprised no one has proposed something like this before. And exactly what does this new drug of yours do? Hmm. An interesting proposal, if your data pans out. But where's this hematite coming from? The active mines would be too expensive to retool. The deep mines could be an option, but they're full of spacers. Or so I've heard. Well now, that is intriguing. A completely untapped resource pool. 
and the sort of utility every mining firm in Sidonia would be clamoring to get their hands <coughs> on. We could contract out all the actual lab work, bring on one of the hungrier mining concerns for materials, the licensing fees alone, and think what it would do for our image with the general populace. This mine reopened thanks to the Martian Trade Authority. Very interesting indeed. And what do you want for the rights to this drug? This is a promising fine, certainly. I can see us granting a generous finder's fee in exchange for handing it over. Was that it? Dr. Walker's debt. Consider it cleared. Well, it would seem we have a deal then. Here, your finder's fee. We'll just be taking that slate before you have any second thoughts. It was a pleasure doing business with you, Captain. you now. Fine work. My end of the bargain then, I suppose. He's holed up in the old Red Devil's HQ. Place was sealed up tight after the UC shuttered our unit, but we snuck him in the back entrance through the deep mines. Was also going to warn you about spaces down there, but it sounds like you might have already tossed those drakes. Here, the passkey. I'll let him know there's someone he owes one hell of a thank you on their way down. just to do me a favor. Now you want to explain to me why you're going around harassing the various old men by wiping away their hard-earned debts? Adrian sent you. She's... Did... Did she look okay? A Terramorph. She's fortunate to be alive at all. Hope you two have plenty of backup. <laughs> So what's this she had you bring all the way down here after putting you in harm's way? Terramorph attack, huh? Not exactly sure why you'd be bringing that... Wait, Tau Gourmet? Like, Tau Seti Tau Gourmet? That's a joke, right? There's no settlement old enough on Tau Seti to have a Terramorph. Either someone's setting up the worst petting zoo in the universe, or... If she made you come all the way for this... 
Let's get inside. I need to see these cells. Gonna ask you to not touch anything. Got some projects in the works down here. I wasn't expecting guests. Oh, and Lou mentioned how you took care of the dead. Can't say I'm thrilled the Trade Authority got their mitts on the research. But I guess that's the price you pay not to live in a cave the rest of your days. Adrian really gave you this sample. You're not lying to me? Because if you told me this was a hoax, and it'd be the best damn fake I've ever seen, I'd be mad and very, very relieved. No, that's the problem. This looks about as genuine as they come. This sample, it's got all the indicators of the worst terramorph attack in human history. I presume you've heard of Londinian. And for good reason. The swarms are so bad, they had to blow the spaceport and seal the place off from the galaxy at large. Not a lot of samples made it off the world from the time of the attack. But the ones that did, well, they look just like this one. I didn't detect any of the telltale signatures this specimen ever sat on a ship while it was alive, either. I don't think it was transported to Talzetti. This specimen, it grew there. Faster than any Terramorph should. Which means, if we're about to start a new era in human Terramorph relations, where big, sudden Londinian-style attacks can happen outside Londinian, that's not gonna end well for humanity. So, you lugged this bad omen all the way here. You wanna tell me what your plans are for it now? The Circle, huh? <sighs> Could use a drink about now. Here, faster we take the lift to the surface. Not supposed to use it, but given the circumstances, I'm inclined to just ask forgiveness. Let's get going. <coughs> to handle a situation like that. You need to read the room. Look at you. You're an old man now. <laughs> you know, hassling yourself anymore, Major. Our friend here showed me your sample. Suffice it to say. Not here. Let's talk somewhere more private. Lou said we could use the back.
Lou gave me the abridged version of what went down. Yeah, I can't thank you enough for taking care of all that. Makes two of us. I hope it ultimately didn't end up being <coughs> too much trouble. That's... well, that's certainly not what I was expecting you'd have to go through. But thank you. I'm just glad you both came through intact. So, were you two able to get that work up together? Got it right here. That sample? It's an exact match for the ones from Londinian. Londinian? That's... that's exactly what I was afraid of. Not thrilled to be the bearer of that kind of news, that's for damn sure. So tell me you've got some kind of plan for that workup. Well, right now, we've got more questions than answers. So I've been trying to figure out what it's gonna take to access our old Terramorph data. Good place to start. What'd you find? It's in the archives. The Armistice Archives? Doesn't that mean we'd be dealing with the Cabinet? And the Freestar Collective? And House Varun somehow? Guess we can kiss that approach goodbye. I didn't think the Cabinet would be willing to hear us out either. But I called in some favors. They've agreed to hear us out on two conditions. <coughs> One, they want to see this analysis you two have procured. And two, they want to discuss what happened on Tau Ceti. With both of us. It can be a daunting experience. Which is why I wanted to make sure, before you agreed to anything, we gave you the whole truth. Percival and I, we're not just researchers. We were military scientists, ran a division of the UC together that deployed aliens on the battlefield as weapons. Place I was hiding out, that was our unit's home base. After some early fits and starts at other facilities, the place eventually became the heart of UC Xeno warfare. A practice that's been banned ever since the armistice went into effect almost 20 years ago. And the UC military cut us loose for what we'd done. Oh. Well... That, uh, <coughs> That means a lot. It's not something I'm exactly proud of. But it was during that assignment that the UC asked us to explore deploying terramorphs on the battlefield. The project never got off the ground, but the data our team gathered is now sitting in the archives, along with all the other information banned after the Colony War. Under the watchful eye of monitors from all the galactic factions still participating in regular politics. But if we can convince the Cabinet to help us access that data, it'll give us the tools we need to decipher what exactly this sample might mean. And hopefully, how to prevent more attacks like the one that spawned it. All right. I'm gonna go get this work up into the Cabinet's hands. I'll meet you out front of Mast in New Atlantis. Good luck. You two are gonna need it. Workups in the cabinet's hands. They said they'll call for us once they've gotten to properly review it. But listen, I know I should have been more forthcoming about who I was earlier. So, in the interest of full disclosure, there's one more thing you ought to know before we head up there. My relationship with the UC. It's more complicated than it might seem at first glance. The UC's <coughs> actually the only reason I'm here in the first place. I am a clone of a man named Francois Sanon, one-time fleet admiral of the UC during the Colony War, former head of the UC Navy. They called him Ve Victus, woe to the defeated in Old Earth Latin. 
a title he earned. The program I was a part of, it was the UC's attempt to create a new generation of military minds from one of their most respected tacticians. Secure the leadership of the UC military for generations to come. I'm getting there. The man I was cloned from, my father, was executed for acts he committed during the war. The man caused a lot of death on both sides. Freestar Collective and UC. Military and civilians. And the things he did, well, they're a part of the reason the UC and Freestar Collective aren't really on great terms to this day. So my involvement, it could be another obstacle they throw at us up there. I just wanted you to be forewarned. <coughs> I, I really appreciate you saying that. I just thought you deserved to know, considering how much you've done already. You know, while we've got a second, was there anything else we needed to discuss? I know you got dropped into the middle of this pretty fast. Or, if you've got any last-minute business to attend to, now might be a good time. No telling how long the cabinet's gonna keep us waiting out here. Then I guess it's just a matter of... The cabinet meeting is about to begin. All parties, please proceed to the cabinet chambers. Ah! Captain, congratulations on joining the race. Ah, welcome. You must be the captain Hadrian mentioned in her report. You have our thanks for the risks you faced in securing this information. Oh, I'm sure she did. Yes, well, precisely how urgent is what I hope will determine here today. <coughs> so now, we have two petitioners here making a surprising request. Access to the UC Xeno Warfare team's Terramorph data, currently housed in the Armistice archives. A request which will require not just this body's agreement, but that of all three Armistice signatories. UC... Freestar Collective and House Varun. Now, Captain, we've all read Hadrian's report on the subject, but we have yet to hear from you. Perhaps you could summarize for the Cabinet what it is you see as the goal of this endeavor. Hmm, that is something to consider. Though we also have to take into account the nature of the data you require. Madam President, I object to the very premise of this meeting. While no one would argue that what happened on Tau Ceti was anything less than a tragedy, Terramorph attacks are not some sudden new threat on the horizon. They've been happening for generations. To demand, we hand over banned archival knowledge and possibly upset the balance of galactic diplomacy because of a single attack seems at best panic. And at worst, a power grab by the daughter of a bloodthirsty warmonger and her associates. I would remind the chief diplomat who he's speaking to. If it's my father you're looking to address, you're welcome to consult a medium. I would also ask how many deaths the cabinet requires to act. Fifty? Fifty thousand? Because if tragedies like Tau Ceti are just prelude to more attacks, I have no doubt you'll get the body count you require. Let's keep this civil, shall we? And while there should be no doubt, the preservation of life stands paramount among this body's duties. Chief Essene has a point. Will a single attack, however troubling, be sufficient to convince the other factions to grant us access to what they no doubt consider weapon data? I don't think it's enough. Perhaps you can help, Captain. As the one who actually collected the sample in question, did this terramorph seem at all alarming to you? That is worth considering. This attack took place on an almost completely uninhabited world. The casualties were minimal as a result. But if there's another attack, will we be so lucky? 
Hmm. Yes, a fine point, Admiral. So then, Captain, given the discussion now and the information you've been privy to thus far, if you were in our position, would you grant the request made to open the archives? I'm inclined to agree. As am I. Uh, I suppose that does get to the heart of the point, doesn't it? Very well. I consent. The galaxy was lucky you were here today, Captain. You and I are in agreement, Chief Diplomat. So, if there are no other objections, I believe we can agree to give our full backing to make the request to... <gasps> what was that? Incident. Chief Sarkin, what's happening? There's been an attack at the spaceport. Terramorphs. Terramorphs? More attacks. Just as predicted. Good God. There. There must be another explanation. The, the creatures evaded our scanner somehow. There will be plenty of time for conjecture later. Chief Sarkin. Order the evacuation of the spaceport and have your men contain the things, but do it discreetly. The last thing we need is a citywide panic. Yes, ma'am. Admiral Logan, the local barracks can provide support? I'll make the order myself. Nearest anti Xeno squad, though, is off world. It's going to take a while to bring them in. Well, then, we'll have to make do with the tools we've got. You too. We can't risk those things getting out of the spaceport. I want you both on the next train there. We'll let them know you're coming, and that you've dealt with these things before. Now go show them how it's done. We're on it, ma'am. Captain, I'm right behind you. Let's get down there. what you did we didn't we didn't want to hurt them the way those people were acting i've seen this before they were under the terramorphs influence weren't they i i don't know they were down at the port and they just started screaming we tried to restrain them get them on the train to get them out of harm's way but but some of the other officers down there we couldn't restrain them fast enough. They just started firing on us. People we knew. They went berserk. Fermonic projection. Some terramorphs, they can induce this fog. It affects everyone differently, but some people just lose control, turn against everyone around them, even if they don't want to. They're like a puppet. You kill the morph, you break the hold. But this means we're going to need to be real careful with our fire and keep that EM weapon at the ready. Let's do it. Nat's unlocked. Please, do what you can to help them.
never safe. Got the remaining creatures locked down on the landing pad, but we're barely holding our perimeter. They said you've done this before, huh? Well, one fire team to spare and whatever supplies you need, but I, I can't risk them taking over any more of my men. Put those things down and do it fast. We will hold them as best we can. For some backup. You say the word, we're out there on your six. You two have any experience with Terramorphs before? Only the brief they just gave on the way here, but we know how to handle pressure. Surviving a full on mental assault isn't the same as keeping your cool in a firefight. Might make you more liability than asset. We're not UC security. You don't need to worry about us. Roger that. We're on you. Anyone nosing around here has got to have a death wish. Something's moving out there. they weren't kidding about you two. The universe put the right people in the right place. <laughs> Certainly doesn't feel like it. I don't want to think what would have happened if you two hadn't been here. Just glad we could rise to the occasion. Captain, we should report back to the President. Let her know the Terramorphs have been dealt with. Take care of yourself, Sergeant.
They said you're free to come and go. That's a relief to hear. We Captain? Hadrian? It would appear that the Cabinet owes you our thanks for what you did for the city today. I've got a lot of calls. As well as an apology. Your concerns about the Terramorphs well, consider them validated. Thank you, ma'am. Of course. I only wish we could have acted sooner. Now, today's events have only clarified our path forward in the eyes of the Cabinet. You will have our full support in collecting the Terramorph data from the Archives, as well as a subsequent investigation into the nature of these attacks. But to accomplish those goals, we're going to need the right people in the right places. As such, the Cabinet has authorized me to reinstate you, Hadrian, effective immediately, to your former rank of Major. As soon as we've got the data in hand, we want you investigating these attacks and how to stop them. Will you do this? I... Y yes Yes, ma'am. I'd be honored. Excellent. But as you've both made clear, for such an investigation to succeed first, we're going to need someone to convince the Free Star Collective and House Varun to play ball. Someone who knows precisely the sorts of dangers the colonies and all the galaxy are facing right now. The Cabinet wants you, Captain, to be that representative. We do. In exchange, we're willing to fast-track your citizenship upon collection of the data. So, will you help us? I'm glad to hear it. Now, we, of course, won't be sending you in without the proper support. Deputy McIntyre in the Office of Interstellar Affairs will be your guide on gaining access to the archives. You should be able to find her in her office across the hall. And on behalf of the whole of the United Colonies, you have our thanks. You're dismissed. The next time Terramorphs rear their ugly heads, the UC is going to be ready. I'm going to go check in with Chief Engineer Kulkar. Chief UC, these orders, a Vanguard captain. You... Yes, sir. I'll make sure they get what they require. That must make you my vanguard captain. Welcome to Interstellar Affairs. I'm Deputy Chief Diplomat McIntyre, Chief Yassine's second-in-command. I heard you were instrumental in protecting the city from the attack. You have my gratitude. I was also informed that you gave quite the presentation to the Cabinet. Chief Yassine wants you to know the Interstellar Affairs Office is fully committed to this endeavor, accessing the Terramorph data and beyond. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure you have the tools you need. And that means first getting you into the Archives. You do know what the Archives are, correct? Hmm. Someone paid attention in current events. So, then you also know that it was originally managed by the three major galactic players. Access to the Archives is only granted in cases of dire emergency, and requires a one-time use code from each of the three Armistice signatories. UC, Freestar Collective, and House Varun. Now, the UC is already on board, so that means we'll need to convince two people, the Ambassadors of the Freestar Collective and House Varun, to hand over their codes. Get them both, and you'll have your data. But that's a lot easier said than done. <sighs> I couldn't agree more. However, both ambassadors have reasons they won't, or can't, work with us. Now, I'll provide guidance on how we believe you can acquire each code, but ultimately, it'll be up to you to get them both to cooperate. And I do mean cooperate. Threats and violence are off the table here. Though that doesn't mean we can't get creative. But it does mean we need to get you up to speed on who you're dealing with. Who do you want to start with? Ambassador Radcliffe of Freestar, or Ambassador Balmore of House Varun? Ah, the good Ambassador Radcliffe. She's a veteran of the Colony War, 
and her only goal in life is to make ours miserable. Now, officially, our office is suggesting you try and negotiate with her. Use your experiences as a member of the military and with the threat we're facing to convince her to lend her support. And who knows? Maybe that'll work. Stranger things have happened. But my suspicion is we're going to have to rely on other tools to get her code. Certainly. See, good diplomacy is all about the careful application of pressure. We just need to find the squeeze. UC Intelligence has a recording device planted in the Ambassador's living quarters, which we suspect you can use to your advantage. But getting caught trespassing is a quick way to land yourself in an embassy holding cell. So, if you are going to try and access the device, you're going to need to find a way in there without being seen. Now, we recovered some intel we believe should be able to help with that. But there's also a disgruntled staff member you might be able to pump for information. Maybe even convinced to work with you. All right. Here, your diplomatic ID. I'll give them a heads up, you're on your way. Not likely to let you through the door otherwise. And take these. Chief Yassine wanted you to have some options on how to proceed in there. Ambassador Balmore's... a challenge. When the rest of House Varun retreated into seclusion shortly after the signing of the armistice, Balmore stayed here. He's since lent his support to a small number of archival requests, so there's real hope he might again. Though claiming to know how a member of House Varun thinks is a quick way to earn yourself a psych eval. Of course. But there is... another wrinkle. We're not 100% sure Balmore's actually still alive. His public appearances were always rare. But it's been several years now since he last poked his head out. Scans of the facility show life signs, but not the kind we were expecting. Your task is to find him and kindly but firmly remind him of his duties under the armistice. I have no doubt. Now, the embassy front door isn't an option, but our spies have stated there's a side entrance that should allow you access. Here, this device should get you all the way down to the embassy interior. Once you're inside, though, finding the Ambassador is going to be up to you. And fair warning, we received a report that alarms might have been tripped inside the Embassy during the attacks. Watch out for automated security in there. Now, if you have additional questions or require clearance for a new approach we haven't already discussed, don't hesitate to ask. I'd suggest you start with Ambassador Radcliffe. Approach her while the attack is still fresh in her and her staff's mind. Be smart out there, Captain.